Were you happy with either of those? No. All right. no welcome, back to the Bur- All right. welcome back to the Bourbon and BS podcast, everyone. Happy Whiskey Wednesday. We are joined, if that sounds familiar for longtime listeners, we are joined tonight by none other than Jake Sanders. Hopefully, you guys have volume. So if you guys are uh, listening on Facebook, if you want to check that out, if they've got volume right now, I'll before turn, we get too far into this. I'll turn this. mine up, see if there's an echo. Yeah, before we get too far into this. We got anything? We're good. Good. All right. I don't have any audio, but Jake does. Freddie says it works. All right. Uh, good thing. We uh, we still have some issues sometimes doing this live. So uh, thank you for those bearing with us. Please share it uh, with everyone else. Glad we have uh, audio now. And for those listening on the audio, give us a review. Uh, five stars, all that good stuff. But I want to thank our sponsors. First and foremost, you guys. Patreon.com slash Bourbon and BS podcast. We have, uh, we're going to do another raffle tonight between part one and part two. So if you guys are on there, um, Tyler says, what a cast. Um, if you guys are, are on there, so $5, $10, or $25 here, whatever you guys want to do, it helps us continue doing the show. We love the support. We appreciate it. Uh, we're going to get some more swag out there. But in the meantime, uh, one of our other sponsors, Altidus USA, has provided us with some raffle prizes. So we're going to do another one of those this evening between part one and part two. So if you guys want to get in that raffle, just go to patreon.com slash bourbon BS podcast. Also Tinderbox at Easton, they're providing the Rocky Patel special edition tonight uh, in honor of Jake Sanders, who is with the Rocky Patel company in a matter of speaking, not like a rep, like we've had Rob Wilson, the lovely Rob Wilson on before, but we want to get into what he's been doing since he left the podcast. He's one of the co-founder, one of the co-founders along with myself of the podcast stemming from whiskey wednesday many late nights in the garage good times drinking really good times from what we remember uh altidus usa i already mentioned thank you very much they have the second cigar tonight the romeo y julieta the reserva real nicaragua which had a lot of praise recently uh that's an aj fernandez blend great and, choice uh, yeah great choice good follow-up there and then also bs cigar company we have the gold and the silvers available at the tinderbox at easton so uh, make sure you check those out if you're in the Columbus, Ohio area, or if you want them shipped to you, do that. Call us at Tinderbox at Easton or through the podcast or through BS Cigar Company uh, through the social media. Got Nate Hale here as well. For those that aren't watching and recognizing that, uh, call it a lovely beard. <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave it at Distinguished? that. Distinguished? I don't know if that's it either. Okay. Salt and pepper. There's definitely salt and pepper probably in it. <laughs> <laughs> the white stripes, I call so, it. So, yeah, Jake, you uh, you left the podcast probably about a year and a half ago. Just yeah. give a summary, I guess, of uh, – I know you've been on kind of since in the audience. Yeah, um, just because I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> right, and here you are. Here you are. So, welcome back to the garage, and uh, tell us kind of what you've been up to since you left the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me back, Steve. Nate, um, it's – feels great to be sitting back in the, in the garage again, in the Steve's garage. Um, yeah. So a year, year and a half ago or so I accepted a position at burn by Rocky Patel, Indianapolis. Um, so it's Rocky's, uh, fifth location in his burn lounges. Um, obviously it was, uh, you know, hindsight. <laughs> we had no idea that 2020 was going to be the year that it was. No. Um, so we were open for about, three or four months and we had to shut down on March 15th of 2020. Um, we reopened back in the end of July of 2020. Um, now, and, and this is kind of a testament to who Rocky is. He kept all of his, uh, managers, um, on payroll. So I was personally not affected by any of it. Um, and I praise, it's amazing, yeah. I praise Rocky, our directors, um, everybody that was involved that, allowed that to happen. So thank you. Um, and so we basically had to start basically from the ground up. Um, we were actually opened when we opened in July, we were only open for two weeks and the health department shut us back down again. Lovely. Um, because we didn't have, we, we don't really have a, uh, menu. We just do high, high end liquor and cigars. We do have some foods just because we're required by the state because we do have a restaurant license. That's how we were able to do cigars and being able to smoke inside. Yeah, and state also, laws are different, right? So in yes. Indiana, it's very specific, just like most, but they're they're yeah. unique in a way. Yeah. So like to have the licensing to smoke inside to sell tobacco products, 
and to sell um, liquor together, we had to have a restaurant license. And what they did was, is they said that we didn't have a full menu, um, which I, I kind of agree with that, but I mean, that's a very, what it, defines a full menu. Right. And that was our, that was our argument. Um, we didn't really fight it. Luckily we were only shut down for another two weeks. So we reopened up in August and uh, we've been fighting back ever since. It was great to have the NCAA tournament and the Big Ten tournament in town. Oh, yeah. Um, luckily, uh, Rocky himself came back um, about three weeks ago during the time and got to be there on a record-ending night. Um, so he was really, really pleased. Nice. Um, our director, Steve uh, Drenth, um, who is a great mentor and boss to me, um, they were all very, very pleased with the turnout. So, um, I like to say we're back. I think Indy's back. I think the city's back. Um, people are coming out. People are still, um, f figuring out that we even exist. Um, so that's <laughs> nice. And, uh, cigar sales are going up. So it's, it's been a whirlwind for, to say the least, as far as figuring out different personalities amongst managers, amongst, amongst staff, um, being a leader as far as a manager in the place it's uh been been pretty crazy to say the least but it's it's great i'm so blessed i i told rocky you know i i couldn't have asked for a, a better opportunity and i uh just speechless really so it's awesome man i mean I'm, yeah yeah it was a huge opportunity for you. And obviously it's, it's amazing to see that. And with the up and down, obviously I know you had had your worries at times, just like a lot of people in, in the year 2020, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I never really, I, I, I was more worried about like for Rocky's sake mm -hmm. um, because I mean, I took it to heart because he did give me the opportunity. So I wanted to make the best of the situation, but we really couldn't do anything. Yeah. Um, with restrictions and everything. So um, getting back to it, it's, I mean, we are full swing and, and getting to hear the words, you know, from the man himself, the last time he was in town and the compliments that he told me, I just uh, blew it's, me away. It's got to feel good to work for someone that has your back and supports you in the way that he does. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, also going back to what you said, you know, paying you guys while you guys were still shut down i mean yeah that says a lot about who he is you know as a person and as a boss yeah for sure and and the fact that the, the opportunities within the organization as far as burn by rocky patel goes um are endless for me right now so um i think a lot within the next year is it it's going to change how again. big is that location um, we are just a little over 5,500 square feet. Um, so we can, we have two levels. We have an upstairs mezzanine. If, if you want to be fancy and call it that, um, you guys are fancy. So it's definitely a mezzanine. <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd call it upstairs. Um, where those stairs go, <laughs> they go up. Yes. <laughs> and so, um, we're just, we're just over 5,500 square feet. We can hold about 400 people in the building. Really? Um, not, not currently, right? Not, yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, Technically, right. Air quotes. But the, the capacity is typically 400. The, or so. the capacity is 398 exactly. Jesus how, so, how does that size compare to the other four locations? Um, as far as I know, we are, if not biggest, if not the biggest, we're the second big or the second. Which one's bigger? Um, the only one that I don't know about the, the range is, um, is Oklahoma City. Okay. Because Oklahoma City is also a, a second level gotcha. building. Um, and, and it's kind of, I won't get into sales very much with them, but the, they, they kind of struggle. Um, but it's a beautiful, absolute. It, it's, it's probably the most beautiful one of the bunch really, as wow. far as the build out goes. Wow. Nice. And I, yours is the most recent, correct? Yes. Yeah. I went to the, the Naples one yeah. right after he opened it. Uh, when Jess and I were on our honeymoon and it was absolutely gorgeous. It was, it was the finest cigar lounge I went to when I was, down there in the whole Naples and Fort Myers area. I think that's how Rocky does it. So, <laughs> well, and, and Naples, I mean, we, we look at the sale, they send out sales every day. And I mean, Naples is a different beast when it comes to They're crushing it. Yeah. It, it, I mean, well, especially through, this time of year, cause winter times, they're busy time. 
but Probably. through but through the whole thing i mean through the panda i mean they well, were the they're in florida. florida yeah <laughs> right i mean they were the ones and that we, as i said in previous episodes it didn't matter what side of the covid scenario or the politics side uh everyone fucking vacation in florida oh yeah like people are like oh i'm not going outside i'm not going to work i am not even going to the grocery store but they're going to florida but next week you can't get a hold of me i'll be down in florida right and you're like wait what yep 100 so, percent yeah so that's probably who you had down there so it's, um, it's been amazing that's awesome and we'll get into uh, a little bit probably how all that relates to the topic that you know you suggested a handful which was very <laughs> nice um you had some encouragement i think from something that we might be drinking right now <laughs> yeah but, some uh, form inspiration of, some form of liquid encouragement creativity but uh yeah so we are uh going to be talking about in part two what do we say letting the past living beyond your past yeah living beyond your past yep. or live beyond your past i don't know whatever you wrote and whatever i typed in here we'll figure it out <laughs> um man, rock, let's get into the cigar here yeah so you work for rocky patel so we figured we'd pick a cigar this is Rocky Patel Special Edition. This is something that only certain Rocky Patel retailers can carry this cigar. This is something that um, Tinderbox was able to get in. Tinderbox at Easton, Columbus, Ohio. They were able to get in because Rocky himself was going to be in attendance at the Smoking Tent event yeah. uh, March of 2020. That unfortunately got canceled. That we already ordered all the cigars. <laughs> or, <laughs> yeah. So we still have some. So they're still available at Tinderbox at Easton, as well as many retailers across the uh, the country. But again, you have to be at a certain level with the Rocky Patel as an account on what you carry that you're able to, to bring this in. So definitely check it out while Tinderbox has it or, or check with your local retailers. What do you know about the cigar? I, I kind of refreshed my myself with the blend. Yeah, I kind of had to, too, to be completely honest. Um, so... The Rocky Patel Special Edition, it is a, so it's all Nicaraguan tobacco. Um, it comes out of Rocky's Tavacusa factory in uh, Nicaragua, okay. um, which he actually has a cigar named Tavacusa mm -hmm. as well. Um, but it's a Nicaraguan Habano wrapper leaf. Um, and it's medium body. Um, I th I mean, Rocky would, I mean, you can read the notes yourself, but I think it's, I think it's a great medium body cigar. I think it's got, I, I, I like to say that it's a cigar for somebody that wants like full flavor, but wants medium body. Yeah. Um, cause it has, it has the full flavor as far as like the, the dark roasted, like espresso notes and the coffee and, um, kind of like that, like nug, like nougat, like nougat. nut and stuff like that. Um, pepper in the retro. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. Um, so it has a little bit of spice, but it's still like smooth and very subtle, very velvety. Yeah. Um, we, we sell a lot of it. I, I don't know about you guys as far as we since do. you brought it in. Um, we do. It was something we had to, we had to introduce at, at Tinderbox. We had to introduce it obviously to people cause we brought it in right around the time everything got shut down. So do you guys um, just have the Toro size? Just the Toro size. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's a great size. So it's a box press cigar. Yeah. Um, so there's a Robusto, a Toro, and then we all, the, the sixties actually round, um, as far as yeah. what we have at burn. Um, funny story we actually had a guy that um during covid he probably allowed us to keep our lights on to be honest he would buy probably one to two boxes every week of the 60 ring gauge are those <laughs> still of the special edition 10 count wow. boxes yeah they're all yeah. 10 count yeah. boxes yep and yeah they, it's kind of the layout of like the rack patel sun grown maduro they had the, yes. the box press robusto toro yep and then they did the round 60 as yep. well yeah. yep same sizes but I think, yeah, it's a great cigar. So this is something that, yeah, the way that it was introduced to to our market here, I don't know. I mean, obviously, you guys were, were selling them throughout the whole time right. know, as soon as you guys got up and going. For sure. But uh, this is something that, you know, when we had Rocky on the Bourbon and BS podcast over, shoot, it's probably about a year. About a year, yeah. It's coming up to a year now. Um, I can't remember how cold it was at the time. It was pretty but, damn uh, cold because I was sitting outside watching it. Were you? <laughs> but I mean, we had him on, we did the LB one with, with him uh, on the show, but we, that week, uh, during that time I was doing a lot of those, uh, weekly specials, um, promoting that. So it was something that this was thrown in there. And I think that's where a lot of people got introduced to it. When I want to congratulate you on that, like watching you do that stuff during COVID, oh, I think yeah. that helped, uh, I think that helped a lot of, I, I think it gave a lot of shops ideas as really? far as like, as far as revolutionizing, 
um, sales during the time. Cause like there was stuff that it's I very was, flattering. I, there was stuff that I was trying to figure out what to do during COVID um, as far as, cause we were only allowed to do takeout cigars for a small right. period of time as well. Like yeah. you guys were. Um, so I, th I think the fact that you guys were able to like mingle stuff together and do these packs and the following that the bourbon and BS uh, community was able to like come through and and actually support it was just actually really really cool to see so oh, that's awesome to hear. yeah that was yeah it was a tough time we've gone over it before on here but i mean that was something that uh stemmed from initially it was the altidus with josh bentley who obviously he's a huge supporter of the podcast and the shop um but he was the one that he and i were talking and we did a weekly special he was like hey let's do a like a stay-at-home sampler i'm like absolutely and then it was like okay and then it was like talk to the next rep the next week and yep. it's like every like we just did and uh kylie who you know you know from matt sherman, matt sherman yep. um but she I actually got a timeless right there, there you go so uh but yeah she was the one that called it basically like the qvc type like home shopping network thing because yeah i had a tendency because i was using Streamyard and i had the thing scrolling across and it's like and if you call now <laughs> type thing. <laughs> no it was perfect I but uh, yeah it was fun it was fun and it was it was uh i did notice that a lot more people went online so you might be right what us little guys here in columbus ohio yeah you guys aren't so little because i mean if i mean the amount of people that have came to burn and the amount of people that i've talked to and i'd say like where i came from and how i got started in the cigar industry that i mean they i don't think brian nor you realize how many people have gone like came and gone through those doors oh yeah in the, in the in the past years because it everybody that i've talked to from as far as like new york philly to out west and you know and do like chicago and even like north dakota they they've been to tenderbox at easton that's awesome um so when i say that it, it actually has a lot of clout as far as with a lot of them probably came for a 10 event or two yeah <laughs> yeah so the, the respect is there for sure that's awesome i love that and uh so that being said, thank you very much. Actually, that's, that's yeah, that's very nice to hear. Obviously, and obviously, you were a big part of it in the last uh, couple of years you were here. You know what I mean? So yeah, and Ryan, and I mean, yeah, to see everybody kind of move around and it just I don't know. It's really really cool. After I think about it, so <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, with this cigar, the Rocky Patel Special Edition, um, you kind of gave great notes on it. This is something that I think retails, at least on our shelf, it retails in the 12 to 12 plus range, about $12 uh, on our shelf. I know that's about the same at uh, some retailers may charge a little bit more because it is tough to find. You guys charge I, less. I, I miss Ohio taxes. I'll just say that. What do you charge for this uh, at Burn? We're about 13, 14 before yeah. tax. Yeah, I think this is so, twelve ninety five on our shelf. They're, they're, the, the Toro size is about 15 after tax. Yeah, yeah. But again, I mean, for what you're smoking, I think it's a great one. I mean, you said the Habano wrapper. Uh, it's great box press. I think um, that Tabacusa factory really set Rocky in a different direction, I think, when he, yeah. when he opened that up. We still have those talks with cigar smokers that Rocky and a couple other brands are just like, oh, I don't really like, I don't, I don't like Rockies. When you suggest something, like, what do you like? And I'm like, oh, I like this. And it's like, well, this is Rocky Patel special edition. Actually, it lines up a little bit with what you might really enjoy based on what you said well, i don't like rocky patel cigars which ones right like, what have you smoked and you're like, you're like well i smoked the 1990 vintage you're like okay well that's yeah. you know one of his classic ones you yeah. know honduran factory and so this is coming out of the nicaraguan factory and you know the, the sun grown maduro and then like a lot of the more recent stuff are really bold like the quarter century has got that mm -hmm. san andreas wrapper it's coming yeah. I mean, it's like they're really doing rocky's done a lot of different things so i think it's really cool to see that he chose uh to do it out of the tabacusa factory yeah he is uh in the last like two or three years he has really van like ramped up production on a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and uh i mean i i i try to dive down and i when he's in town i try to talk to him about stuff that maybe like we shouldn't talk about as far as like where some tobacco is coming from and stuff sure. like that yeah but it's kind of fun because <laughs> he does open up and he, he doesn't have any secrets where you know, like when you talk about his relationship with Placencia and stuff like mm -hmm. that, and I know Tenderbox just got Placencia in, um, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, and and their that tobacco is everybody knows if you haven't seen on the Bourbon and BS page, I yeah, lo I love Placencia tobacco, but BS yeah. Gold is Placencia. Yeah, and yeah. the fact that 
um, Rocky's relationship with Placencia and the amount of tobacco that actually they both have like in stock, you know, for future projects is, is really, really cool to see. So I'm, I'm excited for the years to come and to see how many cigars actually are created. <laughs> Cause I mean, t- 2019, 2020 yeah. Rocky came out with probably what, six or seven different cigars. Yeah, he was rolling through them. And he's known for that. I mean, obviously, but it was just he's doesn't seem like he's stopping it. I think it's great. No. Yeah, he it's amazing that you know, all the years that he's been in the game, like he's still coming up with not just different blends, because anyone can come up with different blends. He's coming out with great blends mm-hmm. still to this day. It's and, a wide portfolio. Yeah. And <laughs> I th- I think I think there's a lot of people out there that don't realize just how many cigars Rocky makes in a year. Come to burn, and you'll see a the portfolio. I mean, it yeah. is it's insane. I think ballparks what around 20, 25 million. Yeah, so, I mean, that's a. I mean that that he's that he's producing. Yeah, yeah. I so. mean that's that's up there in one of the the top in terms of a a a, a company. Yeah, that's that's. Yeah, I mean he's he's got to be probably one of the top five. Yeah, he's he's really ramped up. He's doing okay. <laughs> he's doing all right, uh, and he's he is a stand up guy for sure. Um, what do you think about the cigar, though? I, I've always liked this since I had the opportunity to smoke it. I think this is a great cigar. I think for the price, it's it's wonderful. Um, Construction wise, typically it's it's very good. Uh, I don't know for sure, but we've talked about it before on here that I've heard two different techniques typically when you do a box press of a blend. Yeah, one is, and it's the exact opposite. Is that one is that they put an extra leaf in there, right? For the filler, when I'm talking about that, is they keep the, the the ratio the best they can, but there's an extra leaf, so that sometimes affects the the profile slightly when you have the round version, like of a Toro, and a box press version of the Toro. Um, but this one, I think they they probably do the other, where they take a leaf from they the filler, take a leaf, be just based on the the construction and the draw. It's very easy draw. It's not overly easy. It's not going to be anything where you're like, oh, this is too airy. Typically. Um, there's always room for error there, obviously, because it's a handmade product. But overall, it, it feels a little bit lighter than some. Like, yeah, I noticed that with the, again, I mentioned the sun-grown Maduro from Rocky. The the 60, the round, yeah. has a little bit, it feels denser yeah. than, say, the, the box press Toro or Robusto. For sure. But I prefer the box press Toro Robusto in that blend. So I don't know. I've, I've not smoked the 60 in this blend. Uh, but I, I think overall, this is a fantastic. The presentation is great. I think it's a good cigar. Um, and, and really, it's just enjoyable if you like, because like you said, it's it's full flavor, but medium in strength. Yeah. So how about you, Nate? Uh, I, I put this cigar more, you know, medium plus, almost that medium full mm. uh, for me. And that, that could just be because uh, how much flavor. And surprisingly, as... Uh, as much I know, I muted my phone. As much as um, that got me distracted. Uh, <laughs> Who's texting you? Is my wife. Is it important? No. Uh, so, Don't so, say that. I think She's the box. Listening. Of course, it's important. It's your wife. She's saying the box interferes with the aesthetics. She just wants to see your. your I'm arm. over here. It looks great. I'm over here. Uh, <laughs> just... No. Um... <laughs> Look, she really I'm, messed no, you up. I, I muted my phone and yet somehow still went through. Uh, thanks, honey. Cigar. Uh, I think with as much flavor that you get from this cigar, and even though I classify more like medium plus, medium full, as I said, yeah, uh, it's on the draw. It's still very smooth texture to the smoke, but then that retro hail, There's a there's a good amount of pepper. But not like a pepper bomb. It's not a harsh pepper, right? Um, it you know, if you're someone who's used to retrohaling, it's or e- even if you don't retrohale all the time, like it's not necessarily going to make your eyes water. If it's your first time retrohaling, probably. But yeah, there's just so much flavor on the retrohale, and it just makes it uh, so much more complex of a smoke. It's just really, you, really velvety. Yeah. You think what? It's just really velvety. Velvety. Yeah. Not but the pepper in your nose, but the rest of it, yeah. Just yeah. like the, the, the texture o- of the wrapper itself. Well, that and just like the overall like flavor. Like I, I tastes I, like velvet. Yeah. I'm gonna come That's out That's a new one. I'm gonna come at Jake's you with the weird wheel. notes. I'm gonna come at you with That's the weird the notes tonight. That's your, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, suggest some homework for twenty twenty one. 
is that you uh, do the do burn, a book burn well do a book you do a little pocket book like oh, remember what it maybe a short story I don't but, know but, but I do I do agree with Jake I that you should do a Jake's flavor wheel done <laughs> done I, I do agree with Jake that it, it, clementine it, plum all of it fuck. the deep fruits <laughs> <laughs> chapter ten I know you missed <laughs> it chapter ten I know you missed it the, I had to search the deep <laughs> deep fruits yeah plum <laughs> yeah. That's the big one. So there we were, a bottle deep. <laughs> Sorry, Nate. <laughs> no, I, was, I, do, I do agree with Jake that I do get this uh, this dark cocoa or this black coffee note to the cigar. Yeah, he had said, I think, espresso. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or like a chocolate-covered espresso bean. Yeah. <laughs> a Java. No, <laughs> no. A no. Jennings Java coffee there bean. There you go. There you go. Yes. Uh, yeah, so overall, I think it's it's great. What are we? Uh, what are we? What are we drinking? Um, so um, I wanted to bring something really cool for the the podcast, just because I haven't been on in a while. Um, so this is the Angels Envy Cast Strength 2020 Edition. Um, it's 120.4 proof, so it's 60.2 percent alcohol. Um, it's uh, it was. I want to say a gift by a good friend of mine, Jason Faust, where Jason and I have uh, became very, very good friends since I moved to Indy. He is a whiskey guardian for Angel's Envy. I mean, what does that mean exactly? So he is, he's, he's a brand ambassador for okay. whiskey wh or for uh, Angel's Envy. Um, and it's such a, what a cool title, right? A whiskey guardian. Um, I think it goes with the angels type. I know, but it's theme. just, but yeah. it's just so cool. Um, is, that, is that on his business card? It is. It literally is. That is pretty cool. It, um, and there are, there are worse titles out there. For, and and for employment. Yeah, and Jason's such a such a great guy. Um, he's a huge whiskey bourbon guy, obviously. And so him and I really hit it off since I moved to Indy, and we've shared a lot of bottles, a lot of late nights, like what Steve and I used to do. Um, and so. I got to try, he gave me a sample of this one time, um, in early 2020. And, uh, I told him that I absolutely loved it. Um, I, I think it's way, way better than 2019. I um, agree. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of backstory if people don't know. So what they, what angels envy does is every year they come out with a different batch that is cast strength. Um, so it's different ranges on proof, proofage or whatever you want to say. But, um, they do a different bottle every year and a different batch every year, but um, I liked it so much. And I asked Jason if he could find a bottle for me um, and him being a whiskey guardian, he was able to find one and he gave, I mean, I'll just call it a gift. That's awesome. <laughs> and, That's great. and so I, you know, with it being a 200, $250 bottle of whiskey um, with it being a, a gift from a good friend that also appreciates whiskey, it was, it was really, really something. So I wanted to bring it and share it with the guys here on the podcast. Dude, I'm honored. That, I mean, it's great. That's yeah. fantastic. It definitely so, lingers. Yeah. I mean, yeah. at, I mean, regular angels envy is fantastic. And when regular angels envy came out in what, like 14, 2014, something like that. Um, they uh they took the whiskey world by storm because what they did is they they basically took what the the Scottish heritage had done with whiskey with finishing um, whiskeys in certain barrels as far as uh, port barrels or wine barrels or champagne barrels and uh, They're known for the port right port yeah, barrels, yeah yes so yeah. that's that's what Angels Envy does and with they it. were they were really one of the first yeah they were and and that's what I mean is yeah. they they Angels Envy revolutionized. Um, how they, how we drink whiskey today. They, um, they started that argument of is finishing a barrel, is it still bourbon? Yeah. Like they started that with mm. the regular yeah. Angel's Envy being port barrel finished. Yeah. And, and so Lincoln Henderson, the mm -hmm. guy that created Angel's Envy, um, he was actually a part of Brown Foreman yeah. for a really long He's time. A legend. Yeah. And, and that's where he, he went over to Scotland and learned all these different techniques um, as far as finishing whiskeys and stuff like that. And then he brought it to America and this is what the product is. Um, they're rye. A lot of people love, it's a little bit more, it's, it's pricey, but the, the rye is finished in Caribbean casks. Mm -hmm. So it's finished in rum casks okay. and it makes yeah. it very, very sweet, but you have the spiciness. 
And those are much smaller casks, but they can reuse them over and over. Yeah. Because Angel's Envy is the only distillery I've actually gone on a tour of. That's right. That's right. And it was it was just a few years ago, and uh, it was absolutely unbelievable the the history and everything of the building and and whatnot. It was absolutely fantastic time. Yes, I want to go to other distilleries, but I mean that one just set the bar. Well, and now you know, unfortunately, like Lincoln Henderson uh, Mm -hmm. has passed away, and you know, rest in peace. But his his son Wes Mm -hmm. um, Henderson is basically the master distiller there, along with their uh, along with Wes's sons. Um, So it's definitely a family family operation. Um, It's definitely an easy distillery to get behind. Um, But the fact that you know Jason Faust, my you know. New friend and Indy, you know, we become friends. Guardian and, of the whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he gave me this. And so it's, uh, it's, it's really rich. Um, I don't know what, have you tried it? I'm trying it. I have tried it and I'm trying to figure out there is an overwhelming, I mean, obviously with the heat, it's, it's a little bit of, um, that cinnamon sensation for mm-hmm. me, but it's, and maybe it's with the cigar. Maybe it's just cause this is my, you know, first drink of the evening, I mean, going in neat on 120 proof, you're going to get heat, typically. But it's still smooth. It is smooth. I'm not saying, yeah, don't it, get me wrong. That's what's crazy yeah, about it, though. Yeah, it, it, but it is, there is a bit of a burn, but it's it's that kind of cinnamon. It, it is really, yeah. Um, and it's not like that whole big red thing, but like, you know, you put like, like a. For me, it's like a peppermint finish. See, and I'm getting cinnamon more than peppermint, honestly. Or maybe like one of those little uh, uh, pinwheel peppermints have like the cinnamon center. <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe. I, no, I, I see where you're saying it. I do. I so it's it's maybe. I like listening to other people like talk about whiskeys, and I think I I said that like a long time yeah. ago. Yeah. Um, because everybody's palates are different, right? And so the f- the first time I actually tried this, and and we're using rocks glasses. Um, but oh, could have gotten you. No, 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 no. It, it's no, it's it's fine. And I actually I like trying whiskeys in different glasses from you time want to, to, time. to do it. no 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 it's fine it's <laughs> not, fine. i mean i'm not saying like you know get another one out here no it's fine <sighs> no so what i'm saying is is it, it's the first time i tried this get some glen Karen's no bullshit sean, sean. get some glen Karen's out here will you no just drink out of sean's <sighs> glass Thank you. Thank all right you. so all right we'll share your glass then but the cool part was is that, so the first time i tried this it wasn't a, it wasn't a glen Karen. And then the second time I tried it, when I first got the bottle, I opened, Jason brought it to burn and I opened it up then and there just because I don't, I feel like whiskey should be shared with friends that you care about and family that you care about. And especially, you know, if it's something special, like it, it, you don't keep it just hidden from everybody. It's, I, I hate, I literally hate how the whiskey industry is gone and like the black market and the secondary market. And it's just insane. Oh. But um, we used to talk about that a lot when you yeah. were on the podcast. Yeah. Well, and I still do. I talk about but it with I, everybody. I agree with you Because it, it has ruined what this is supposed to be about, which is friends and I family. I just wish they'd go public like on the stock market. So if you want to make money off of the bottle, right. just like invest in the company. Yeah. That would 100%. be so much easier. 100%. And you want people buying it and but, not buying yeah. it secondary. But so the, like the first time I tried in a Glencairn. Thank you. And then the second time I tried it when I opened it up at Burn. Thank you, Nate. Um, I tried it in, uh, we have at burn, we have brandy snifters that are, that are really thick at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're really nice. And so I tried it in that and it just blew me away in the brandy snifter. And now we're, you know, drinking in rocks glasses. So it's, it's really cool to drink it in different things. But when I first tried it, um, it was in a Glen Cairn or the the brandy. It was in a Glen Cairn. Cairn, Um, and even the second time when I got this bottle and had it in the brandy snifter, I got the same notes as far as there's a, and I'll, I'll pour it for, or do you mind pouring this neat in the, the green can? Yeah. Um, so what's really amazing about this whiskey, I think, as far as notes is, is just the pure richness as far as like the cinnamon and, and all the, do you get cinnamon as well? I, I do. Yeah. I it's think a, it's a powerful, like, I, and that's not a, for those who don't like cinnamon, I'm not going to say you wouldn't enjoy this. But there is a lot of that to me. I I think on the taste, yeah. but yes. but on the nose. So the nose is this. This is a beautiful whiskey as far as the nose being. So what it was so funny because I told Jason when I when I first tried it, I thought and you guys have done the old Forester nineteen ten on here, right? Yes. yes. So 
here was the crazy part is I, when we were doing the tasting test, I was trying this and I was trying to figure out what I was picking up because it was very familiar to me, I thought. And so what we did was, is we grabbed a bottle of Old Forester 1910. And I said, if this ain't fucking Old Forester 1910 cast strength, and we oh. tried it side by side. Wow. And and to me, that's what it was. Wow. So it's got so on the cinnamon because of the proof, it has that it has that cinnamon and that that bite. Yeah. But on the nose, it's got this toffee tiramisu like velvet like dark chocolate thing going on. Um, and then it it hits you with that heat at the end. Um. But the fact that it's it, it's just that toffee that in that mocha kind of elegance that I really got out of it that is like the old Forester 1910. When I sniff so it, up. when yeah. I sniff it from the rocks glass, I get a little bit I get more sweetness. When I sniff it from the Glen Cairn, I get more spice. Yeah. On the nose. Yeah. It's yeah, it's it's crazy. Uh, yeah, again, I, it lingers I, though. It's got a hell of a And it's finish. almost got this, it's almost got this mint finish. That's why I said with the peppermint. Yeah. So there, yeah. Yeah, there you go. So so I'd comp with the cinnamon and peppermint, it's it's interesting because when you say that, like when we say that, Steve and I always said that the Angels Envy Rye was like Christmas Day. Yeah. Yeah. Because that was, it was in that like, top tier of, of yeah, some of my favorite was, kind of everyday ryes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this was I mean, to Jason Faust for gifting this to me and and to you guys sharing it and tasting it. I Cheers, mean, man. Thank you. Yeah. Honor having you back. And to Jason, if he does listen yeah. tonight. Ooh, that was a good one. That was uh -huh. nice. Was nice. Got to hold it from the base. Yeah, there you go. But, yeah, I, uh, I'm i I'm blown away with the Angels Envy 2020 Cast yeah. Strength Edition. Um, the 19 was a little hot. Yeah. I, it was I, really I, spicy. Yep. Yeah. It, yeah, I remember better out of it, Glen Karen. I remember we had someone, uh, someone who's a friend of the podcast, bring a bottle of the uh, 2019 into the yes. tinderbox box yeah. and share with us. And yeah, we were all sitting there going, "Oh, that's wow, got some heat to it." When it was this only... up front, it's just got this thick caramel yeah, texture. Caramel, note that's it. Up front, but cinnamon caramel. That's 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 my yeah, toffee. Toffee. I don't. I don't know why. I, I, but because toffee, you never had tiramisu. I don't know. like 20 Be years ago because, because yeah, in college yeah it was a big thing in, in miami we had tiramisu with every meal well in oxford it sounds about right oxford <laughs> oxford ohio for Christ's right sake. with with this with, th with this being a 120 proof i think it hides the fact you you wouldn't necessarily know that this was a like a, a 70 72 percent corn in the no. mash bill yeah, and that's where they no, do it right. Because yeah. I think it's I think it's seventy two percent corn, eighteen percent rye, nice. and ten percent malted barley. Yeah, and because because Angel's Envy I'll for, this, for the longest time's uh, been one of my favorites, and uh, I actually have uh, yeah, you have your pick. I have an Angel's Envy uh, pick that was done for a cigar and whiskey bar in Indiana. Was that match? Yes, and uh, I I bought that in uh, twenty thirteen, and. Uh, I'm just waiting to have the right group of friends over before I crack that bottle. Oh, we have to be at your place. Yes, because <laughs> right. I, I don't want to transport that thing around. Yes, I got I got my. Uh, yeah, that's what I, do. I do have my whiskey case from my booze box from uh, yeah, H&S Customs. Um, I also have one. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever see that? Yeah, it matches my boots. <laughs> oh, Sean's got the audience. Sean in the audience. Oh wow! I just have one question. What is the difference why do you pick up different uh flavors and notes when you use a uh, glenn karen compared to a rocks glass what is it that makes that what i love the fact they just grab the mic i love it yeah that's that's it's amazing it's how, how we roll out here word. sorry sean word yeah that's well our, our uh you know studio helper <laughs> actually hands it to the, so, the people um a long time ago steve and i actually did uh what we called beyond the bs we tried to do it for like 
what two weeks <laughs> or i tried to do it like once every month for like yeah three months. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and so yeah you did a great one actually on the glasses yeah and i did a good one on the glasses that was the first one you tried yeah and i haven't done one since <laughs> so um you've been busy I, that, it, but that's kind of what our sunday check-ins are like now yeah except we don't have any useful information on those <laughs> <laughs> okay we can we can start but eh, maybe so so with glassware um basically with a Glen Karen, so you kind of have this uh wide yeah pat style says airflow which i really miss pat i just saw matt his brother did you really a couple he, weeks he ago commented earlier yeah both of them were coming i just saw matt a couple weeks ago and i was actually going to bring a bottle that matt had given to me a couple weeks ago but i didn't know if it was something that we should make public so um but so with glassware it's Basically, if you're looking at a Glen Karen, it's really it's kind of fat at the bottom and it kind of is almost like a flute. So what it's going to do is intensify those flavors. It's going to intensify those notes. Um, and it's basically going to allow you to kind of be a sommelier or a connoisseur where you can really pick up on some of those hints of whatever is in the whiskey. Um, with a rocks glass, it's you can still do it, um, but it, it's hard to figure out those certain notes because it's all air it's all aired out right away yeah. because it's a wide it's a wide glass and there's no there's no direction to the airflow in the glass that that get yeah yeah exactly like a vacuum almost except opposite that you know that glenn Karen, it just intensifies all the flavor yeah I actually think it takes away a bit of that I do that, too. that spice of the cinnamon yeah, actually, I think it actually for me, it it kind of balanced the 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 drink. For me, it makes the that that spice. More caramel, there's more. It, for me, it makes the spice on the finish last a lot longer. Like I can still really? feel it on my tongue and on my lips. But that's because it's not being aired out. Like, yeah, it's not. And I mean, look, I mean, I mean the the Facebook people can see it, but literally, you can stick the Glen Karen glass in the rocks glass. Yeah. And, and so that's the visuals. that's the difference as far as literally airing out the whiskey. Um, if you think about it, you know, if you like, if you open a bottle with it being, if you unseal the bottle and have the bottle sit for a year, it's going to taste different from the first time that you opened it to that later year. Yeah. Because it's air, it, the, the, the it oxygenation yeah. of the whiskey is going to taste completely different than when it wasn't it when it was deoxygenized so um and then if, if you use a brandy snifter i've actually gotten into since we have brandy snifters at burn um i've gotten into drinking out of the brandy snifters because it has a wider base so it it it's the it's the buffer between a rocks glass and a glen karen but it's still tapered a bit because it does yeah. Like, right yeah and that's it's why i'm saying it's the like buffer this. oh yeah, yeah. because it's, like it's a still a wide yeah. it's still got a really wide base but then it it tapers off and it, it 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 kind of allows the right um just airflow well it makes sense opinion. because i mean this is called a rocks glass i mean from a cocktail standpoint obviously i'm not a, a bartender or anything like that but calling it a rocks glass this is intended for a short cocktail or whiskey on the rocks or whatever it might be like an old fashioned or what, whatever. Right. Yeah. So you have the Glen Karen, which you, you brought up the fact that it is a, a Scottish thing, I believe originally. Mm. And that is because typically you were drinking scotches neat. Yeah. And for a long time you were not drinking bourbons or whiskeys here neat. So that's why the rocks glass is always the popular one. Yeah. Brandy snifters have been around forever as well, because right. typically you're drinking brandy neat. Right. And so that was that after dinner, the, the typical, a stereotypical, like, you know, gentlemen's after dinner, we're going to go to the, to the, uh, the lounge, library have a, or whatever. Yeah. We're going to have a right. cigar and, and brandy. So, I mean, you, yeah, you hit it absolutely on the, the head there is that it is kind of a, a mixture between the two of them. Yeah. And I think this is something that, that really concentrates it. I do agree that you get a longer finish, but it comes in late. That that spice comes in later, the yeah. mint or whatever it, it might be. But I think, Jake, you and I might be on the same page that, when that's was, rare. It's been a while. <laughs> we don't spend <laughs> we don't we don't spend a lot of waking hours next to each other, like you know, talking about shit all the time like we used to. <laughs> you know, yeah. 
<laughs> it was good. I, I, I mean, I really, I don't know. You guys can say what you think, but I, I try to just like what Steve used to do with cigars. I remember it was so funny because when I was trying to learn from Steve about cigars, when I first started at the tender box, I remember trying to ask him about stuff about cigars. And it's funny because he, he used like, he just f used like, as far as notes with different cigars, it was just familiarizations with yeah. certain cigars. Yeah. Like, well, this cigar reminds me of that cigar. And there's certain things about this cigar that reminds me of that other cigar. So that's why I said that with this, with this whiskey, I think, I think literally this is a 1910 old Forester cast strength. I think that's that, something that's useful because if you've had something before, if they have it, they don't have the opportunity to get their hands on this, then you can relate to it. Absolutely. And I think that's also just a side note, like when, whether it be cigars or whatever, we always used to joke and we still do a little bit. Like when you talk about like leather or earth or whatever, yeah. and you're talking about some of these, these, these tasting notes, you have to, it's an agreed upon tasting note. Yeah. Like if you, if someone like if you say, yeah, I kind of get this out of this cigar or this whiskey and I also get it out of this stuff. What does that remind you of? And I think that's how it's kind of evolved into that tasting wheel yeah. of what it is. Because again, when you talk about that, as far as we've, we've, we've discussed it before, especially with cigars and they do talk about whiskey as much the same way, like the taste of leather. Yeah. Like that doesn't really make sense because it's not a normal associated to your, your flavor palette. But see, that's what, that's the only thing when I get, th that's when I get irritated is because when people, I mean to irritate you. no, I'm not saying you're, <laughs> God damn it. Don't flip the table. that's not what I meant. Ah, <laughs> no show's over. I'm out of here. Yeah, <laughs> no, but that's, that's see kinda, in another year. And a half. I got it. But, <laughs> but that's kind of what irritates me when people talk like they make fun of people. Now it's, it's one thing if you're holding your pinkies up and you're like, yes, this is so amazing and blah, blah, blah. Oh, that's a lot more than a pinky. But, Right. But what I'm saying is, is when you're talking about notes, when people like make fun of notes of like leather and barnyard and all this stuff, like weird notes that you like don't really think of, it's you for like actual science says that over 75% of taste is, is contributed by smell. Yeah. So we've all smelled leather, right? Some of us have shoot it. So, so you know the taste. Mm -hmm. So we know everybody knows theoretically what the taste of leather is. So when people make fun of, well, how the fuck do you know what leather tastes like? We all know what it tastes like because smell has contributed to taste well, and we all have smelled leather. Well, and sometimes that flavor, when you taste something, it can trigger a memory that might be associated with. And that's the, the most beautiful thing. That's the most beautiful thing because then you're able to create an experience. Yes. Wow. When you, like when, you, when you tie multiple senses together, it has a better chance of forming or, a memory. Or, yeah, when it creates a memory of something. Yeah. A long time ago, Steve and I talked about, like, he, he was kind of making fun of the fact, like, how the fuck do you taste barnyard or what the hell is barnyard, right? You don't taste barnyard. I'm well, by that statement. no, I know, not whiskey. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, it's like, well, what does barnyard mean to you? Well, does it smell like shit? No, it doesn't smell like shit. To me, barnyard is when I was 17 years old and I was up in the hay loss. Hey, yeah, you know, doing then hay bales. Hey. I still stand by that. Then say, "Hey, okay, well, then it's hey." But I, I've actually used. Uh, I get what you're saying. I've I actually, do. I'm, I've I'm actually, not negating that. I think you're absolutely right, and I think you guys hit the good point. Is that it is that's where the retro hail comes in. That's where when you drink, um, you know, wine. A lot of times, you you are inhaling through your nose as you drink wine. I do it sometimes with whiskey as well, just to get yeah. that airflow because. They do ab absolutely pair well together. Yeah. I, m I remember there was one time I smoked a cigar and I couldn't finish it. I smoked about a quarter inch of it because the the flavor note I got out of the cigar, I said it tastes like what a, a horse stable smells like. <laughs> it's not something I want to be it, putting not, in my mouth. Yeah, it was not pleasant. So I put that cigar down and lit up something else. But it's kind of like the barrel fermented, the, the Pappy Van Winkle barrel fermented by Drew Estate. Have not smoked yep. that. So that one is a pure, like if it literally smells and tastes like mulch. If you, if, <laughs> I'm, I'm not uh, bullshit. You, why would anyone want to smoke that? It, that's not the point. Like red mulch. Or are we talking like dark black, black mulch? Really black stuff. mulch? Yeah. Manure. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. It really freaking does. It's crazy. When you light it up, it smells like you just did your yard. 
in the spring <laughs> with dark black mulch. And yet we still get calls about that cigar. Right. But it's a good cigar. You sold me. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Can I flip the table now? No. No. <laughs> no flipping table. No. No, no, no. Right, hold on. Let me, gra- let me right, grab here, my... Before we go on to the, the, the last part of uh, part one here, let's talk about the presentation of this. <laughs> all right. It's been blocking, you know, you guys a little bit. You know, Jess is upset. I don't want to upset Jess anymore. She said it makes it feel like I'm cut off from you guys. Oh, what do you mean? It's in between us. I know it's like you guys are over there, and I'm. We use Studio over. Magic. We're actually six feet apart. You can so. stick it right here, and it's going to be like it's going to cover my mic. So this is a wooden box. It's a wooden box, and it is burned into it. It's burned into the uh, the front of it. It's got a beautiful graphic, if you will. I don't I'm call it a graphic. Hang on, I'll talk about the front. Thank you. So, <laughs> yeah. So this is something. Oh, they include tasting notes. Yeah, I kept that in there. That if you guys look at this, it's it's just absolutely beautiful. That's actually burned into the the wood. It's got a nice stain to it. Very very uh, intricate detail on that. Same with the sides of the box and then the wings on the back. The yeah. wings are or what's on back of the bottle. It's beautiful. Um, and the back of the box. Yeah, that's what that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. So they they carried that that on. That's on the the normal Angel's Envy bottle yeah. as well. What's the tasting notes, Nate? I, I kept hold so on. Steve, ev- Steve wants to keep oh, going about the. No, that was it. That was, that well, what's well, also if you look at the back of the lid, yeah, it's got that little hole at the top, yeah. so that so way you, you could actually hang, hang it on yep. the wall. The wall yep. hanger. Yeah, yeah. And and so what I did when I, I always keep, I always like to know what the master distillers say, right? Because I'm, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a master distiller, but I, I say what I think, what it sounds like, and what I, what I taste, right? But so what is. Uh, Wes Henderson say so all right about so, so Angel's on, Envy cast strength. So on the nose, apricot, plum, bacon. There's the plum. <laughs> See? They're not even deep searching. See? That. That's Hold not on. even like the deep fruits. Where, Hold do we get to deep fruits? Plum. Apricot, Man, no, right out of the plum, game. baking spices, brown sugar, leather, oak and vanilla. <laughs> Bing cherries play heavily and carry through to the taste. All right, real quick. Real quick. Of all those notes, everything is 110% specific. <laughs> and then baking spices. Cinnamon. That's one of, let's say cinnamon. But they're not you. I just, I just, I Remember, feel like Sean, you're going to the, plum. This is just on the notes. You're going, I know, that's what I'm saying, but like baking spices, I don't get it. Like, well, how do you go like, that's this whole thing. Like, you're talking about like your plum and, and you're all excited about the deep. And it's like, and the whole cabinet of baking spices. You open up every fucking bottle, <laughs> just put them together. Is Garlic's in there, you cumin, know, cumin, uh, um, paprika. I mean, yeah, exactly, all of it. Old Bay. Oh uh, yes, that's got to be in it. I need right. some shrimp. Uh, palate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, palate is ripe cherry, salted chocolate, orange peel, and faint cedar. I get, I get the cherry. I, yeah. I, I get the cherry, and so I, d- I definitely get the salted chocolate. So it's There's no cinnamon mentioned. It's interesting. <laughs> it's in the baking spices. That was in the nose. <laughs> it's uh, in the flavor. And then, <laughs> hold on, and then and then there's the finish. The finish better be, notes. Better be goddamn cinnamon in there. The tannic finish is complemented by the citrus fruit qualities. Neither too bitter nor too dry. It lingers pleasantly on the back of your tongue. There you go. I'll give it that. But so it's interesting. <laughs> so so it's really interesting. Think about this for a second. And I've I've learned this through uh, I've had to get into wine since being at yeah. the high end burn, right? So I've had the opportunity to get I, into wine. No, I've had you, I've had to. You had the opportunity. So okay, are you my HR department? <laughs> right now. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> where's Brandon? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the funny part is, is the fact that Angel's Envy is finished in port cast, right? Port yes. wine cast. Yes. So port wine cast are associate wine is associated with tannins. Mm-hmm. So it's funny that the finish, that's the first thing that they say. Yeah, well, that's the, 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 the port. Barrel. I know it's just, yeah. and it's funny. Well, and, and I've also, I've also seen one where, uh, you know, there are so many, there are so many whiskeys that are one. now finished. Oh, yeah. In whether it be port My, barrels, tawny barrels, different types of port or tawny barrels. And so someone, there was a, a whiskey uh, reviewer who had actually recommended to people, 
to get to know your ports, like taste ports from different areas, from different regions, taste tawnies from different regions, because then when goes. you drink a whiskey that is finished in barrels from those different regions, you may actually be able to pick out, like if they don't disclose whose port wine barrels they're using, you could actually possibly from tasting it, if you know enough about your ports, you might be able to figure out where that's coming from and who they're using. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot out there. I, uh, it, well, and it's funny and just, <laughs> I won't say a word. Go ahead. No, just, just think for a second about, so like now that our, our palates are acclimated to the proof. Yes. Do you not get any like dark fruits? I do. I do. And I, I gotta be honest. If you guys do have the opportunity to try this, if you go to a bar, you see it again, not being the whiskey expert, but, um, I drink enough. <laughs> Fortunately, I'm doing this podcast out of my garage. I have, the yeah, it's because to... of the podcast. Well, I know I, <laughs> so <laughs> let's be honest. Steve was drinking bourbon before the podcast. No, I was I, what my point, <clears throat> I've said this before. I, I, I'm very much <laughs> see yeah i think that's the glass i i honestly think it's the glass that's what i was going to get to here um no my point was i go through waves you know with 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 hobbies and and things that i'm really excited about cigars are much the same way right you know because there are times where if i'm going like my if if you go inside right now i, I have very little whiskey like i'm not one of those that has yeah but you got big, some great bottles though i only have a few because that my point is is that once I get to something See, I just had like water. cigars, Try to smell it. I've had enough of those those days where, in the cigar shop, you, you tra and you know this now, Jake. You you smoke enough, like oh, I gotta try, I gotta I gotta know what yeah. this is, so I smoke it. And the next day, you're like, okay, I'm smoking this. And then you go a week and a half or whatever, and you're like, you smoke smoke something that you know you like, right? And you're like, God, I don't know why I don't smoke this more often. Yeah. And I've gotten to that point with whiskeys where I'm not that person that spends a ton of money. Nothing against. I love everyone seeing everyone. Like there was a, a gentleman that came in today and he showed me his because he listens to the podcast and he, he came in the shop today and he showed me his his collection and it was impressive. It was yeah. It was I don't know how many bottles. Well, this Freddie Burt character that's oh, on the no. Bourbon he's, BS he's on all the time too. And Holy I, I shit! He's got a love. hell of a collection. But so holy hell. Going back to this, if you if you have an opportunity to buy a bottle, that's great. But if you see it at a bar. I would strongly encourage you to uh, order it in a Glen Cairn glass because I have enjoyed when you like the you asked about the like the high proof. Yeah, it was immediate going from the rocks Pretty glass, I know. the rocks glass <laughs> to uh, the Glen Cairn. Yeah. yeah, this well, is much more enjoyable. I think it's very very uh, it's more balanced. It doesn't have that that cinnamon, and it's not because my palate's used to it because the sip I had in the rocks glass. Right before this, right. had a lot of cinnamon. Take a sip out of this, and it is immediately um, much more. I don't want to say elegant. It's it's just it's much more complex. It doesn't just like throat punch you, and then right. it, it it has that mint towards the end. But it is it is way delayed. But that's why I was saying when we went to the Glen Karen, it intensified all the flavors there. And so if you're intensifying all the flavors, it can actually be easier to pick out yeah. some of those other ones that were a little bit more subtle in the rocks glass. And you're hundred percent right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I actually just added a, a cap of water. Yeah. And the so note, Steve, the nose on that. smell that. And that's where that, I know you make fun of it, but for the like, audio listeners, like the he's plum, sniffing the glass, the, the <laughs> plum and like the dark fruit notes, the raspberry, yeah, blackberry, yeah. blueberry. There's more fruit. Yeah, it's it's fruit just, there, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah, it it's it just, up, yeah. and that's because of that port barrel. I mean, the yeah, fact yeah. that, yeah. I mean, Lincoln, Lincoln Henderson definitely knew what he was doing. Oh, absolutely. Um, when he started doing this stuff and and brought it from the Scotch heritage and yeah. and brought it in, I mean, he lit, the Angels Envy has revolutionized whiskey as far as in bourbon yeah. a lot lincoln, of people took lincoln note. henderson's in the bourbon hall of fame for crying out loud yeah and he retired and then after a couple of years of retirement he's like you know what i still want to do something but this time i want to do something with my son yeah and look at it now i mean you have like blonde brothers and uh bell mead and everybody's doing all these different finishes and stuff with these different barrels and stuff like that because everybody wants to taste something different yeah um 
So it's, I mean, I'm a big, big, big fan of any cast strength whiskeys that are finished in port barrels or my, my favorite, my favorite, absolute favorite is Oloroso Sherry yeah. barrels, mm-hmm. man. But 10, 10 years ago. I mean, what you, you really liked, um, it was, um, was it so it was a Quinto Urban, yeah. um, which yeah. is, it's a 12 year old scotch that is, uh, f- finished in port wine barrels for two years. That's right. But see, that's the difference between finishing a whiskey for two years in a barrel mm-hmm. with port barrels yeah. and finishing a whiskey for maybe seven or eight months. Yeah, I, th- I think. Oh, yeah. yeah if yeah, I remember correctly, sure. Angel's Envy, they typically age their stuff uh, four to six years. Their batches are usually about you know, somewhere around eight barrels a batch because yeah. they're trying to get a, a consistent flavor yeah. every single time. And then they're aging it for about eight months or six to eight months in uh, those port barrels. Uh, and they have to actually age them uh, offsite. They don't have enough space in downtown Louisville <laughs> to, gotcha. to age all their stuff. Yeah, they don't have any space. Yeah, but all the stuff, I mean, it's it's stored right outside of town. If you go to their distillery, like uh, the company that built uh, their vertical still and their pot still is local. Vendom uh, Copper. The the company that what built, was that? Vendom Copper and yeah. Brass. There's like oh, a yeah. two year wait if you want them to make a still for you. Um, the company that put the fan in, in the giant, the big ass fans in there. I mean, they're a local company as well. The tasting table that they do at the end of the tour uh, was from a tree, an oak tree that had fallen down just outside of yeah, Louisville at a farm that they get a lot of their corn from. And the people are like, hey, we'll give this to you. Just one condition. You can't use it for firewood. So they literally cut it, cut the trunk in half to make a tasting table. And then the the seats are actually from uh, some of the thicker uh, limbs and trunk of that same tree. Yeah. And they so, actually have a real lab. Like you, you see their lab. Oh, yeah. During the tour. So they're, they're using actual science. Yeah, as far as trying to figure out whiskeys and stuff like that. So yeah, I, I tasted some of the uh, the white dog. Yeah, when it came good. right off the still, and I got I got a picture, uh, me and Jess when we were you know because it's it's kind of decorative and it's a place in the facility for you to actually take a picture and it's where you see the uh, white dog coming up out of the still. Yeah, and it's in the shape of a giant bottle. It's it's really cool. Anyone if you've never toured their distillery, it is really cool. And I think they're probably doing tours now again, so that's great. They're unfortunately they're they're just doing tastings. Oh, is that it? At the moment, I think every yeah every distillery is um, different. Now they're there. they're not doing uh, actually the entire Bourbon Trail at the moment. They're not doing uh, actual tours. They'll um, do tastings, but they won't take you through the factory. Yeah, but that's where the best part is. We, we actually got to be part of. It is. <laughs> I know. Like even Four <laughs> Roses, when Jake, you and I went down there, like that was a great stop, even though we couldn't yeah. tour it. And and we well and the and Alicia and I just went down there a few weeks ago. Nice. And, and we nice. went to Four Roses and we um, we just couldn't. We, they're they're not allowing any tours. So Jess and I got to be part of the process of actually filling a barrel. Nice. And then uh, everyone Where? that was at Angel's Envy. That's awesome. Yeah. And then uh, we all got to sign the barrel as well. That's cool. And uh, Jess, you know, did something for uh, Ohio State marching band when she signed it. <laughs> That's cool. That's really cool. All right, now, so as we we round out part one here, so it's the rating time, the whiskey, the cigar, and the pairing. Uh, Jake, you being the uh, guest of honor, being back in the garage, I uh, asked you to go first. So it's out of 10. Really? So we do, basically, you do out of 10, 10 being the best, you have three ratings, right? So the three ratings are, one, the whiskey, so it's Angel's Envy, uh, 2020 cast strength, which is what we've been enjoying. I love what you've done with this shit, man. Wow. It's you, really you, cool. You actually, yeah. You, you It's really you, fucking cool. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, and then the cigar out of 10 as well. So the Rocky Patel Special Edition. This is something that, uh, again, you can't get everywhere, but check your local retailers, your, your, your brick and mortars nearby. Hopefully you can find one that has the uh, Special Edition based on uh, what you've learned tonight. So that's out of 10. And then the pairing. How, how do they go well together and why? So 10 being the best, you're going to give three ratings. Start with the whiskey, if you would, Jake. Okay. Um, so as far as a whiskey, I'm going to give... Man, it's. I'm gonna give it a nine. Nine, nice. Um, I mean, Angels Envy. So the reason why I'm giving it a nine is the fact that a long time ago, 
well, not really a long time ago. I think two or three years a long time ago, but way back. Yeah. Way back. Uh, pre COVID for those kids. <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, please drink responsibly. Um, I got you. But <laughs> there you go. <laughs> There you go. Okay. Yeah, it's perfect. As you, this, as you talk. This is insane. I, <laughs> honestly. Um, so anyways, so the reason why I'm giving this whiskey a nine is the fact that um, two or three years ago when night or uh, I, I believe Old Forester 1910 like first came out, um, I fell absolutely in love with it. Um, and And when they created that product, it was like Woodford came out with double oaked and all these distilleries came out with these these finishings as far as uh doubling the barrels meaning that they were finishing them in a just a second secondary barrel going off the map you know yeah. as far as like yeah it's got to be the virgin oak it's got to be this right. you know like oh, but you know at least right. these many, you know all that stuff yeah. Yeah. yeah and and even though that angels envy didn't do this with this whiskey obviously um i i still stand true to what i said with the fact that the the notes as far as tiramisu toffee these dark chocolate notes these dark uh fruit notes um and even the apricot notes that they kind of said in the cherry and stuff like that the, the fruit notes which is literally my wheelhouse as far as whiskey i love i absolutely love those notes with whiskey um and bourbon yeah um, th this, this is a great, great whiskey as far as it, th this is, if not, I haven't, I've had 2015, 2016, 2019, 2020, or yeah, 2020. Um, so I've had four different batches of Angels Envy cast drinks and out of the four, this is by far the best. Nice. Um, and so I I just think it's absolutely amazing. I, I think uh, Wes Henderson did a fantastic job. Um, I think as far as the cigar goes yeah. with a special edition and me being a, a Rocky employee, <laughs> um, I, I don't want to seem non-original, but... There's a little bias. Such a disclaimer. Yeah. But I'll be honest. If I'm going to pick a cigar out of Rocky's portfolio, this is not going to be the first one. Okay. For this, just in general. You're just in general. In general yeah. Just in general. Okay. Um, and it's because it's not my palate profile. Um, I like medium body. I like cream bombs. I like cedar, nut. Um. Okay. I honestly, I, 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 honestly, I smoke the edge Corojo. Really? I smoke an edge Corojo every day, every day. So what do you give this? Um, I, I give the special edition, I'll give it a six or seven. Six and a half then. Yeah. Six and a half. Okay. Okay. Call it that. Um, I think it's a great cigar and it, and it, and that's just my personal. So this is to you. Yeah. This is just, this is my personal opinion. Okay. I think in that, that has nothing to do with, it has great construction. I've never seen a special edition crack ever. Right. Gotcha. Great construction, great flavor, great profile. Okay. But for me, it's a, it, it. So you're giving more of a personal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But here's a cool thing. Are you going to yeah, blow smoke in the coming, glass? Cannibal coming. No. Oh. Yeah. Token. Smoking token. The cool thing is that I think this, you know, and the fact that I'm here with Steve, and the fact that I'm back on the podcast. Here we are. I think this is a great pairing. What do you give the pairing? Out of I 10? give the pairing a 10. Wow. Because it has your, your dark espresso notes your coffee notes you have your velvet richness coming out of the cigar it's still medium body it's not too much it's not full but then you have a cast strength whiskey that's 120.4 proof that's still very velvety it has those dark fruit notes yeah yeah it has that cinnamon it it matches the spice to the cigar but it's just rich 
it's the the pairing yeah. itself is just <clears throat> rich. This this is a pairing that you have after a big steak dinner or a pork chop with peppercorn gravy and mashed potatoes. Like Are you hungry right now? Sunday night. I'm very for hungry. Me. Yeah, I can sense that. So you're making me hungry. Yeah. This is this I mean, I don't want to say this is a pairing match made in heaven, but but you're saying it amplifies it. It the the, the two together, yeah. th this is a hell of a pairing. Nice. And and the fact that you know, with me being back here and and us having a good time and yeah. doing this and the fact that we just kind of conjured up this thing, yeah. And this being the pairing, it was a, a 10. Nice. So How about you, Nate? Uh on the whiskey <sighs> I, I agree with Jake. I'm at a nine on the whiskey. I really do enjoy, do enjoy this. I love Angel's Envy, whether it's the regular bourbon or the rye. I absolutely love their stuff. And I do agree of the different cask strengths that I've had from them. This is my favorite as well. Uh, I Just always a pleasant uh, drinking experience for me. Uh, for the cigar, I'm actually a nine on the cigar as well. Uh, I really do enjoy that one, and I'm basing my rating not necessarily on this particular one I'm smoking because, as you guys can see, like I'm a lot further down on mine than you guys. You had a little bit of issues with the, the construction, the, but you smoked enough of them that you didn't really bring that into this. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I do want to, you know, I've smoked this cigar quite a few times. You've had construction issues. Well, this one was just so. Uh, this particular one was kind of soft and spongy, and it it yeah. kind of burned up a little quick. Okay. Uh, but I've smoked enough of them to where I can say. You know, this is the only one I've ever smoked that was like that. So what he, he I'll throw a monkey wrench into it. What constitutes his construction issues for the viewers? Well, like for me, a construction issue for me would be like if I'm smoking it and all of a sudden, you know, the foot of it just blows up and the wrapper starts cracking. Yeah. Uh, now that not, that might not necessarily be on uh, the manufacturer of the cigar. Uh, it could be the way it was kept in a humidor. Uh, it could be your UPS guy throwing the box around. <laughs> well, that and, and, and like that, that being said, this, it, yeah, but uh, it also is when you get a cigar. Not that this was, this has been sitting in the humidor for a long time, but like when you get a delivery, people get excited. I don't know if you ever get that at Burn, Jake, is that when you like get cigars in and they're like, oh, you finally got them back in or you yeah, just got that in. Like, I'm going to let them acclimate. Yeah, you got to like, let, let me sit yeah. because they came from here. It's the middle of the winter. It's been on a cold truck, warehouses, all this stuff. And now it needs to get reacclimated to. Yeah, we, we don't, I'm, I'm really lucky that we actually have like a really good UPS guy. So I don't deal with the no, shit. But that, it's still sitting on I'm the truck in the, the winter. transportation, like the up and down. Yeah. Humidity yeah. And like that. yeah. That's a problem. That's yeah. a serious problem. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So, um, I, I still enjoy this cigar. It's one of those that uh, even being at the tender box and having uh, so many SKUs available to me, uh, this is still a cigar that every now and then I do come back to. Um, you know, tender box has over 500 cigars, and I probably smoke at least one of these every month uh, just because it's got such a good flavor and it, 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 it burns really well. I don't typically have any construction right. issues with it. Uh, I don't get... I don't get a cigar that canoes. I don't get one of these that canoes on me where okay. one side just burning up faster. What, uh, what about the pairing? The pairing, I give the pairing a nine as well. So, so nine I'm, nines, the... I'm nines across the board. I think they wow. go really well together. One thing I thought was really. No, I said 10. I a 10. I, no, he gave nines across the board. I know. Board. No, I said 10. Teen. I know. I, I'm saying he uh, said <laughs> nines across. The, Nate said nine for everything. The cigar, the whiskey, and the pairing. Well. Sorry, Nate. To be fair, there's there's only one pairing I've ever given a ten, so I I have a really hard time. Giving we call him the Russian judge around here. Yes, um, Jesus. But no, what I thought was interesting is when I took a drink out of the rocks glass, uh, and then smoked the cigar. Smoke the cigar smoke actually brought back some of the spice uh, from the finish of the whiskey, and made the finish of that whiskey come back and last a little bit longer it when i did that through the Glen Karen, it didn't make the finish last any longer gotcha even though the Glen Karen, you know just amped up the flavor and yeah. everything so it was really interesting just you know smoking the cigar out of the you know and drinking the whiskey out of two glasses as well oh nice cool pop 
So Ian out there says uh, that's the highest I've heard him give all three. Mm. Just in general. Wow. I, I, I've given, I have given a whiskey a 10. I've given a pairing a 10. I don't know that I've given a cigar a 10. I'm just saying, he's saying that this is, he's a loyal. Nines supporter. across, yeah. Nines Nine across the board. Is there really a cigar out there, though, that is a 10? Well, I mean, I mean BS honestly. Gold, besides BS Gold, yeah, I mean, there's, <laughs> there's not many. Well, I mean, Placencia Alma del Campo? It's in there. It's yeah. In there. It's in there. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. I mean, Steve, <laughs> Steve, we round, Steve. As we round out uh, part one here. Yeah. So the, the whiskey, I'm going to give it a nine as well. I think this is a fantastic, I I'm in the minority, I think here where angels envy, I enjoy, but I'm not the biggest fan of it. Um, in a yeah. sense that I'm not the biggest fan. Like a lot of people, when they see angels envy, they're going to just grab it because it's not always available, at least in Ohio. Uh, I see it more often than, than I feel like people give it credit i think it's like used to be a rare one now it's i see it a lot at least where i'm at but i will say that um do you remember when it used to be like 55 dollars? yeah when it first came out what is it now it's like no 40. when angels enemy first came out it was like 42 43 in the state of ohio really now it's 50 oh okay oh well, I it's I completely don't. changed so. my point is is that i'm not always a huge fan of of the angels envy I, I i think it's a good bottle but i didn't get the the hype you know what i mean like i just it yeah, didn't I hit my it. palate much like what Jake's saying about the, the Rocky Patel special edition, not really on his palate that he's going to be seeking it out all the time. It's a good cigar. That's what I thought about Angel's Envy. This is fantastic. This is different. This is obviously 120 proof. I think this is something that I really enjoy. I, I, I've i already said it before that I think that if you're going to order this at a bar, if you see the 2020 bottle of the Cast Strength Angel's Envy, request a Glencairn glass. I think it, it drinks better out of that so i'll give that a nine the cigar i think for the angel's envy it's because it's so corn heavy in the mash bill i think that might be why you're not such a big fan I just, i'm of... just not I'm just not, i mean i think it's great i think it's just not not for me yeah if i got 40 50 dollars to spend and i see angel's envy and something else i really enjoy i'm not gonna buy angel's envy first but i i i, I completely agree with you yeah, yeah. is the fact that it, it's like and i've come to the realization in the last like year or two that I'm just a proof whore is the I fact just, that, you know, like I feel like those around you knew that well before you, I know, but I had to figure it out. Like most things, you always have to admit it in the minute. It's the first step. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> that's <laughs> first steps. Admitting you have a problem. So it, no, it's denial, <laughs> but the Good acceptance, no, I completely agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. So, the cigar, I'm going to give it an eight. I think this is a great cigar. Um, I agree with Jake a little bit. This is not my number one Rocky, but, you know, uh, objectively, I think this is a, a, it's a great cigar. You it's, guys need to get the Grand Reserve vein. I know, I know, I know. And it's Avi threw that up a, there that he actually compared the two of them, which I was surprised. That is know. the best, in my opinion, that is the best cigar That's Rocky has ever made. That's your go-to. In my opinion. Um so yeah, I'll give I'll give this an eight. I think it smokes really well. We talked about the construction; it's it's top notch typically, and uh, so yeah, I think it's it's definitely one. Like I've said over and over again, if you have a brick and mortar nearby, um, yeah, I saw that comment. Fuck up, Jonathan. There we go. All right, part two is gonna be great. Uh, as as far as the pairing, I will say you know I'm with you guys a bit. I'm I'm in that nine range. I think it brings out the best in both. This is something that. Absolutely random, clearly, uh, as far as what we picked out tonight. But this is something that really does well. I was surprised to hear Jake really go from, you know, rating the cigar in the six and a half, seven range, and then doing the pairing at 10. I think that just really shows that just like what you eat, yeah, what you've had that day, you know, you had spicy foods earlier in the day, but then you, you get into a bottle of whiskey, you smoke a cigar, and you're like, I didn't like that. That's why you always buy two if you can with cigars, especially if you can get your hands on two bottles like this, like yeah. Jake did. This is something. The nice thing, I'm not going to say bottles, but have a pour out of a bottle that you 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 have or you bought, and and change up what you ate and drank and smoked yeah. that day and what time of the day um, that you do it. But I think it's a great pairing. I, I really do. I think this is a fantastic pairing. Highly recommend it. And with that being said, um, if you guys are listening live, stay tuned. We're going to take a quick intermission. We're going to do 
the patreon.com slash bourbon bs podcast uh, drawing for a raffle prize i've got a couple sean hurley i still need to get yours out and then uh, i think it's dave gordon as well i mm-hmm. uh, gotta get yours out we've got the local ones out there i'm gonna be going to the post office later this week i'm gonna pa- package those up along with tonight's if we do that but i do want to thank uh, all you guys on patreon.com slash bourbon and bs podcast throw that up there on the screen there and thank you for supporting the bourbon and bs Absolutely. podcast it's uh it's been a long road and oh yeah i uh you were you were there for much of it <laughs> well but it i i look back on it and that, like there's a sub there's a couple things that i i wish that like i want to start my own podcast but it's something that like i wish i was still here doing it with steve oh, and and we had we had our hashings out with are drunken you, nights are you and, living in the past i i am I, Steve knows I fucking live in the past. Well, that's, that's what part two <laughs> so, is. That's what part two is. I know, but I I, I just want to say it, it's the fact that you guys do the ratings and the fact that like Steve's mind. If people don't know, Steve mind Steve's mind goes a million miles a minute, and so it well, it it's really amazing to see what we created out of literally just drinking and smoking yeah. to to. It, it has came to fruition. Well, it's just like when he was doing the specials during the lockdown, and everything he evolved, what was going on at the shop and the podcast has evolved as well because of everything, everything that's going on, yeah. not, not just, you know, the pandemic or anything like that. Just eventually you have to evolve and move on. Right. You guys make me blush over here. Uh, well, don't pee yourself. <laughs> it's just so the cold. intermission is for, uh, so I do want to thank Tinderbox at Easton for supplying the uh, the Rocky Patel Special Edition. Uh, that's fantastic, as we, you've heard. Uh, overall, it, it really goes well. Even if you don't care for it on its own, you can pair it up really well. And sometimes that is a great cigar. So I uh, appreciate Tinderbox at Easton in Columbus, Ohio. Check them out. They still have some uh, Rocky Patel Special Edition, along with a, a wide portfolio of Rocky Patel cigars. And also Altidus USA. I'm going to be lighting up the, uh, the Romeo and Julieta, the Reserva Real. Nicaragua. Same. That's going to be in stock also at uh, Tinderbox at Easton. So thank you, Josh Bentley and everyone at Altidus for the support of the podcast and also BS Cigar Company. Gold and Silver are available now. And the gold is coming from Placencia Tobacco. And then the silver is going to be coming from Espinosa and La Zona Factory. So uh, two great smokes, all Nicaraguan tobacco, which we all love on this uh, podcast. So thank you guys very much. Happy Whiskey Wednesday. If you're listening live, stay tuned. Uh, We're going to do that drawing and then we'll get back into part two. And that is living beyond your past is the topic tonight. And if you guys are listening on the audio, click part two on your uh, podcast app. Thank you guys very much. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Happy Whiskey Wednesday. Thanks, Jake. Happy Whiskey Wednesday. Clear. All right. So do we want to do... Well, do we want to do the? Hall, hall the yep. Do we want to do the whiskey glasses? That was a good fall, actually. Missed everything. Missed everything. Do we want to do the whiskey glasses, uh, a lighter, or the Dominoes and flask? We did the Dominoes and flask last week. Yes. There's got to be something. Look, we got a lighter up there. Yeah, we got two lighters up there. I think one. I think they're the Reserve Real Nicaragua lighters. Grab one of those. That works out well. And we'll have Jake uh, when he comes back out uh, pick this up here. If you guys are out there right now and you're in the intermission, uh, please share it. I mean, this yep. is something that we, we love to, to have more people a part of. And I'm going to pull up the Patreon uh, support page here. So this not, is... Not as strong. Yeah. So this is the... Uh, it's, a, it's a Lotus brand lighter. It's the Romeo and Julieta Reserve Real Nicaragua. So the same as the cigar we're smoking. Uh, it's got that same nice metallic blue uh, case on the lighter. It's a four burner, and it's also got a fold out punch cutter. Uh, this is the one that Tanya won a few weeks ago when yeah, we had Nook yeah, on. Yeah, that's right. And I know she absolutely loves using this lighter. It's a great lighter. It is. So we're going to wait until uh, Jake comes back out. I'm going to have him pick a number between one and 21. That's the current amount of uh, patrons we have right now. If you guys want to be a part of the drawing, 
Uh, I've said it. I know we had some delays there based on uh, our printer of, of the apparel, unfortunately closing down. Todd, um, great guy here in the local area. He had to, to, to sell the business, sell the equipment because of COVID. So, um, yeah, we're, we've got a new one. Talked to him uh, a week, week ago, and we should be able to get some more apparel out there for uh, the patrons and we appreciate that support and if you're you're a current patron that you pay monthly this is something that you guys will be able to um you know anytime we do a t-shirt run you're going to be included so make sure if you're a part of it you you've you've messaged or you've listed your your size and everything else and we'll, we'll do our best to get it out to you i know ian make sure to order a 3x no order a couple 3x's for ian <laughs> <laughs> Jake might be leaving. <laughs> I hope not. Well, if, if he is, at least he left the bottle. So <laughs> <laughs> Tony is not happy in there tonight. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people in and out. A lot of people in and out. What are you guys drinking and smoking out there? Huh? Here he is. Here he is. All right. Uh, I need a um, I need a number, Jake. Between one and twenty-one. Seven. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <clears throat> Tony Barbudo. Hey. Tony Barbudo is uh, he's been a supporter of the podcast. He's been on the podcast. He's a ten dollar a month patron for seven months. He's been so, on the podcast for a while now. What's that? He's been a member for a while. He's been a member of the community page. He was on the podcast he, uh, a couple years back. But he's been a supporter of the um, for seven months. That is, I think he's local because uh, he is local. He yeah, came, so he came into the shop. I'll one reach day out to him. He came in the shop one day and I sold him a humidor. Yeah. So since September, he's been supporting the podcast. So thank you, Tony. And uh, you got a uh, raffle prize. It is the Romeo Julieta Nicaragua Reserva Real lighter there. Woo! Yeah. So what's the what? Which one is that? That's a nice lighter. That, too. That's the quad. Quad. Yeah. That's so, thirty bucks, something like that. Uh, at the tinder box, I believe 39. we sell this at thirty nine ninety five. Yeah, so there you go. I had one, and we had somebody stole it from uh, Burn. So yeah, cool. <laughs> so thank you very much. I should have. What do you got there? A bundle of BS gold. Nice. All right, I'm actually gonna really quick. So you guys talk on yourself, Jake. Is that? Oh, we just go live, huh? Is, is that we're still live? Shit. Uh. Is that bundle of BS from the Placencia batches that we have yeah, now? Okay. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, every time I come to Columbus, I got to get a bundle of BS Gold Toros. Um, I love Placencia tobacco, so they did a great job. Yeah. Yeah, they, they really did. I still have one. Uh, so Steve gave me a BS Gold Toro from the original batch that they created with Cos Fernandez. The first batch. The first Costa. batch. Yeah. It's got the big label on it. It's got the big band on it. Um, and I don't know if I, I'm, pr I'll probably smoke it with Steve on my wedding day. I think that's, that's cool. That's going to be the, the special moment for smoking that cigar. Have it in my humidor. It's still, uh, Still in really good shape, so yeah, I'm excited I, about that. I still have a, a handful uh, before the switch was made from Cas Fernandez to uh, Placencia. I yeah. still have a handful of those. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sean just said, uh, "Is that bundle for show? <laughs> do you want to? Do you want one?" <laughs> oh, it looks all pretty no, it's nice. Sean, it, it, it ain't made to fucking sit here and. <laughs> You're sitting ten feet away from us. You could have <laughs> no. He he respects it. Uh, good good tobacco. Good tobacco. Good whiskey. There's no Jake. We got a question for you from Jonathan Harry. Oh goodness. How was the new Cohiba? Oh, uh, the Siri M. So um, I literally just smoked that today, Jonathan, and. Uh, I was actually amazed by it. I'm I'm finding I'm finding out that I am a huge huge fan of Corojo tobacco. You're just now figuring that out. I I, I don't know why. <laughs> I think it's because of Rocky. 
um, because of the fact of the number six and the edge Corojo and stuff like that. Um, I learned to love Corojo from uh, Christian Aroa. Well, yes. And, and the, and, and we, so burn Indy burn by Rocky Patel. Indy is uh, one of the biggest, in my opinion, one of the biggest um, sellers of Aroa tobacco mm. in Indy. Um, so the fact that, I mean, the Aroa Toros are fantastic. The 25th anniversary are fantastic. And so the new Cohiba, yes, Jonathan, it is, uh, it's, it's a, I don't want to say it, it's just a cedar bomb. Mm. I mean, it is cedar and Was nut. It Royale, which one? The, no, the, the new Cohiba, oh, the Siri M. Um, since, we, we uh, had the Royale, uh, yeah, yeah. What was the gentleman's name? The Sean. 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 Yeah, he was the brand ambassador for Cohiba. Yeah. yeah. We had the Royale on, and that was yeah, and that was absolutely fantastic. That that was the best Cohiba. And Laurel actual actually was just at Burn. I had a nice, nice meeting with Laurel, and we have an event uh, coming up in July. She's um, the brand ambassador for Macnudo. Yeah, for July first. We have an. I just uh, pinned down her for a date to do an event. Nice. Um, and then Mike Sourball is, uh, my new general rep. He, he was with Altidus. Um, Mike's awesome. but, um, I'm more, I'm more excited that, uh, hey, where's the water pitcher? in the fridge. I'm, I'm more excited that Josh Bentley is our, uh, Altus. Altidus. Yeah. Rep nice. For Andy. And, nice. and I, I mean, from day one. With being with the tinderbox, I mean, Josh treated me like gold. He didn't. Josh have is to. just, he's just a good dude. Um, yeah. so it, it's uh, it's gonna be really. There's some, there's some really, really good events that uh, we've created. Fantastic coming up at a burn. Nice. Yeah, yeah, I'll take some. Probably need some. <laughs> me? No, me. No. <laughs> Do you have a glass you want to just pour it into? <laughs> just, no, just drink your bottled water. Doesn't matter. Perfect. Yeah. Gonna rinse out my Glen Cairn. All right, you guys ready? Yep. Welcome back to the Bourbon and BS podcast, everyone. This is episode 165, part two. We've got uh, Jake Sanders still with us. He is pouring a new bottle into my glass. Yep. We've got, uh, what is it, Eagle Rare? It's a Eagle Rare Crown uh, pick. I <laughs> gave Nate a healthy pour. I see that. Yeah. I didn't mean to do that. Thanks, Miguel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, but yeah. it's not meant to sit on the shelf. It's meant to share. So, yeah. fuck it. Jake, thank, thank you, you very much. Um <laughs> I do want to thank uh, for those that are listening on the audio and you have not been uh, tuning along the entire time on the live feed. Every every Wednesday night around 7.30 or so, it was a little later tonight, we had a little uh, technical difficulties, but uh, about 7.30 Eastern Standard Time on Facebook Live and YouTube Live, guys stream uh, live with us and you guys can be a part of the conversation. We like to throw up the com comments on the screen and, and include you guys in the conversation, not only on the whiskey and cigar part, but part two as well. So uh, thank you very much. Patreon.com, we day drawing. Patreon.com slash Bourbon and BS podcast. That's going to fall. Um, he meant the mic, folks. That's right. Uh, and also, congratulations to Tony. He won a Romeo Julieta Reserva Real Nicaragua. Nice. Lighter. Nice. Um, it's quad. Quad, quad Tony. Won. Quad, quad yeah. torch with a built-in punch cutter. It's there a nice light. It's, it's nice it's lighter. The beautiful blue that's on the uh, second cigar of the evening, which is the uh, Romeo y Julieta Reserva Real Nicaragua. Made by AJ Fernandez. Fantastic cigar, medium body. Matches the BS hoodie tonight. It does, actually. Yeah, a little bit. It's a Nicaraguan. The Royal Blue. blue. That's yeah, right. It's nice. Very nice. Um, so that's probably why they chose it for that color. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys. Check, check it out on there. And if you're not going to do the Patreon thing, that's totally fine. We hope you enjoy it. Share it with everyone that might like cigars, whiskey, or the conversation afterwards. We appreciate that. And thanks to Tinderbox at Easton in Columbus, Ohio, for sponsoring and also Altus USA and Be a Cigar Company. Tonight, we have Jake Sanders back in the garage. He is the co-founder, along with myself, for the Bourbon BS podcast. This was his kind of brainchild based on uh, us drinking in uh, my garage years back. No, Steve and I had uh, a lot of a lot of growing together, a lot of a lot of great conversations, and that's what 
whiskey and cigars are about. It's, that's right. it's about friendship and family and and that's how this was created. So I'm I'm blessed to be back here with Steve and Nate and and the fact to to see the bourbon and BS community um how it has grown in the support that Steve has curated is is absolutely amazing. So before we started the that. podcast, Steve had asked me, he's like, Do you want to sit in the middle and have Jake sit on the, the end, kind of like where we typically have guests? I'm like, No, I typically sit here so I can control the board. And plus, for all the time that Jake was on, he sat center chair. So right. no, let <laughs> Jake right. sit, sit center chair again. And one no, of the things no, we I'm, talked about. I appreciate it. <clears throat> excuse me. One of the things you and I, Jake, talked about. You know, so so the, the topic tonight is uh, living beyond your past. <clears throat> but I will say that one of the things we talked about is that you always have a chair here. You know, so anytime you're in yeah. town, you know, you got a chair at the table if you so like it. Um, because, again, this was something that you and I created uh, together. So for those that are more recent listeners that aren't familiar with Jake Sanders, he is now in Indianapolis. And uh, he is the humidor manager of the Burn by Rocky Patel. Wears many hats, but that's his main one. And I know that uh, it's been a great growing experience. And he went into it a little bit. So I'm going to encourage you guys to listen to part one. He gives a little bit of history of, of how they 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 started Yeah, back in 20, 2019, 19. December of 2019. Yeah. Which I was I was fortunate enough to go to the soft opening. And it was fantastic. I'm so glad you were there with Spencer and yeah. and all the guys and uh, Avi. Avi. <laughs> Avi talked me into it. I'm oh like, I yeah. Work next morning. He's like, that's fine. I'll drive. That's fine. <laughs> no, so we're there. I, we're, I'm we're so glad. Until so glad. Two in the morning. Slept for four hours. Got up at six. Got back so I can get to the shop. No, it it was a <laughs> it was amazing amazing opening. It was amazing experience. Um, I can't can't thank Rocky Patel uh, premium cigars and my directors at burn by Rocky Patel LLC uh, for giving me the opportunity. It was an opportunity of a lifetime and uh, it's, I'm, I'm just blessed. Absolutely. So hundred percent. So you, you gave me um, a handful of topics that you were inspired by late in the evening, <laughs> early in the morning, yeah, a lot of whiskey, a lot of whiskey. Nothing's changed, Steve. Nothing's nothing's nothing changed. at all. Nothing at all. Nothing yeah. at all. There's some things I, I haven't I, I wear my grandfather's jackets, and that's Looks about good it. On that's, you. Looks good on you. Yeah. I think 4 a.m. would be considered early morning. <laughs> yeah. It depends when you get started. <laughs> at 3 a.m. is when I get started. But so uh, this was number four of six topics that you sent me, which I appreciate. Um, and this was this was uh, living beyond your past. Now. I don't know if you are you sure I said that I can pull it up. I, I, I got the text <laughs> message. Too. That's what I was going to ask. Do you, do you Steve remember sending this one? It. <laughs> Live beyond, Live your, beyond past, your past. Yeah. Number four. Good. Yeah. Good. The other ones were good, too. Good. Yeah. 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 Pick your poison, you said. So we picked our poison. All right. Live beyond your past. You know what that means? There's a wise man that said that once. You yeah. drunk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I equated it to just to kind of open up the, the discussion here is that yeah, for sure. a lot of the times you see those inspirational quotes and, you know, like the memes, uh, people you follow that they're not the funny memes, memes, but don't let the past define you. Yes. So that's what I kind of brought it into the realm of a lot of times don't let the past define you is something that is associated with the negative. Right. A lot of the times. Yeah. And I think and that's we a, argued about that a lot. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a valid point. That's a big, important part of this is that, you know, don't let the past define you. We've all been through um, jobs where you've been maybe let go or you, you, you weren't happy with it. You've been you've been left. You've been cheated on. You've been in a, a bad situation. You've been hurt. You've like injured, literally injured. Yeah, where you broke your leg or your 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 career, your 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 athletic career was ended because of an injury way before it should have. Right. Um, you know, all of these things and the different aspects of life really hold people back. And it's usually the amount of time of how long it holds you back. And so yeah. that's where I looked at it from the negative. I will throw out in the conversation the positive that there are plenty of people that when they do well, salespeople are probably the most, I'm not saying all salespeople, but I, I've, I've had enough salespeople in my, my previous career that 
when they do well or or even like in in athletics you know if you you win a championship at some point in your life yeah. you you do well working out it's like you know you, you you hit a certain benchmark on a on bench or a squad or whatever and that's what you talk about for fucking years yeah and so now the positives of the past are still defining you sometimes in a negative way because you're living in the past and you're not happy where you're at now but sometimes it will also I will say I go against if you want to the the don't let the past define you is that because it can put a fire in your ass is that I did well now I've got the 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 mindset of like more of that champion where it's like I just have to keep doing better right Jonathan Heron says here we go Steve bashing sales not all sales people Jonathan but if you take that to heart <laughs> go ahead guys <laughs> Well, I mean, if you're if you're going to talk about salespeople, I mean, I work with it was one part. No, of it. I, no, I work I work with salespeople every single day, right? Uh, in in my role, and uh, one of the sales reps that I work directly with on a daily basis, you know, he's had success every single year that he's been in the business. But what's great? Sometimes it's annoying for me. Um, <clears throat> But I think in the in the the long run, what's good for him is he it, it's never enough. Like if I sit there and if I sit there and say, "Hey, man, you know, we're on pace to get to be where we need to be, or we're ahead of pace to get to where we need to be." Okay, yeah, we you know we had a bad week, we had a bad month, like we're still on track or ahead of track to get where we need to go, and he's still sitting there going, "No." I had a bad month. I'm I'm not cool with that. Right. Like that that does not make me happy. I don't care where I where I am, you know, overall. I had a bad month. I didn't hit plan that month. That's not good enough. So you have that motivation factor there. Yeah. He could he could double plan every single month, but then the one month he doesn't make plan, oh, it's gonna light a fire under him. Okay. And I'm like, why? Like, it's not like your manager is going to get upset with you. Like, oh, you're supposed to do, you know, 200 grand this month and you only did 150. But like the last four months, you've done 250 every single month. And he's like, I don't care. It's not enough. Okay. Because he's always worried about how they're going to look at him now in the most recent. It, it's, he kind of has that, what have you done for me lately? That is a classic thing. I, you know, as a salesperson or a sales manager, is that, or just anything really. Yeah. You know, you crushed it, but it's like, what have you done for me lately? You can't rest on your laurels. True. Yeah. Not just work, but like also in, in relationships. Like, oh, yeah. Remember that time we went out? Yeah. That was six months ago. What have we done since then? It's like, oh, well, I, I thought that was good enough to get me through a little bit longer. <laughs> yeah. Jake, what do you think? Uh, you're, 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 I saw you shake your head. <laughs> no, I, I think it's interesting. And this because, is your topic. So, yeah. So, as far as like what Nate's talking about, I, I think it's interesting because I've changed, I've changed a lot as far as since, since I've been on here, um, I've changed a lot in the aspect of, I used to think that like honor and, and, and honor meaning that like, like the history that you have with another person is like the end all be all. Right. Right. Mm. Right. Um, so like when we talk about, like when you guys are talking about like, what have you done for me lately? I used to think that that was a topic of, well, that doesn't matter. Like I have your back, right? No matter okay. what, because of our history. But now seeing like the higher end style of like what burn by Rocky Patel and the people and the clientele that come in to burn. Um, I, I actually realize now that it, cause I, I feel the exact way of what, you guys are talking about, you yeah. know, it, because a, a year and a half ago, if we would have had the discussion, I would have said, well, no, it really matters what that person did for you like a year and a half ago. And, and now I look at it and it's like, well, yeah, it does matter, but you have to think about, you know, well, what have they done for burn lately? You know, what have, what have they done for us lately? Do they, do they come in here and spend money? You know, are they customers? as, as guests and, and, and as people like, you know, I, I know you or just in general, you know, it, you're, a, you are a friend from college. You've done this and that we used to do this shit. And well, 
but you didn't tell me happy birthday for my birthday this year, you know, or, um, you were one of our regulars during, uh, before COVID at burn when we first opened up and you haven't been back since. And then you walk in and say, well, I want the same treatment. Well, sorry. You know, we have new locker members and we have new guests that have literally kept the lights on and yeah. spent thousands of dollars yeah. to be here. And now I'm friends with them and, it, and sorry, you know, can I get you a seat? <laughs> so, yeah, so time changes. Yeah. So time changes. And I, and I don't think that people realize what the relevancy of uh, certain actions that they, um, that they present to other people and what they right. entail. Um, it, you know, people think that they, they do something once and they do a nice gesture once. And it means, uh, it means a infinite number of gracious actions towards whoever. Right. Yeah. And it, and it's like that, no, it doesn't, you know, if we, we can be friends and we can be, uh, together, but, but, if I don't sit down with you from time to time and have a nice chat and have a glass of whiskey and a nice cigar and we don't have a nice conversation, I don't really know who you are anymore. And, and the relevancy of how time passes and how time changes and how people change is something that, uh, I think I've really, uh, come in contact with in the last like year and a half. I think what's interesting the, the same people that, you know, do something good once and think you should remember that for all time are a lot of times they're the same people that if they screw up once or they hurt you once, they're like, oh, no, you, you should just, you know, let that go. You should just, you know, don't don't dwell on that. They want you to dwell on the positive they did, but they don't want you to dwell on the negative that they did. Right. It's like you, you can't have both. You know, you you know your actions, whether good or bad, are going to have uh, an impact. You know, for a long period of time, depending on what those actions are. Some actions are going to carry more weight than others. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, how did you how did you treat them when things were going good? How did you treat them when things were going bad? Yeah. And you know, some sometimes, you know, if a person is if a person's going through a rough patch. Like they're going to remember the people that were there for them to help them get out of that more than the people that were there when things were going good. Right. No, I, I agree completely. I, 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 I look at this, you know, in, in the realm of you guys, because I am not really, I was not expecting this turn already to this, but I would say, <laughs> no, I'm just like, cause living beyond your past, I, I was thinking like, you know, job relationship and everything, but I think it's very much the same. We got down the, 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 the rabbit hole, if you will, sales. Then you went to customers. Now we're, we're talking about all this stuff. Nate talks about, you know, when you're dealing with personal relationships, I think it's something that, there's 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 any relationship and, and jake you were talking about you and i you know how we had like these late nights and you know like you know i i'll call you know butting heads about the podcast about other things about life in general my life your life we, they were we, drunken arguments well the thing is is that there's there's a time where it's you have to be active you have to be active now it's it's living beyond your past is i was i was envisioning a, a different conversation we might get to that point but with this part of it I, I really think that you have to continually be active you 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 know you have to keep doing it you take that sales mentality that that you guys were talking about Jonathan Herring's out there talking about you know sales people as well and then he's now getting the, the friends thing when you deal with relationships and I think Nate that's a great point where you know people that like want to like rest on their laurels with the 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 positives yeah but if you fuck up it's like, well, don't hold on to that, but you haven't been here for me lately. It, it's you it's a, ride that comfort of a relationship, you ride that comfort of a job, you ride that comfort of what you do for a career. And it's even if you don't necessarily have the intention of doing that, you get that. It's a, about comfort, I think, sometimes. And that's when you, I'll say this is. I think that people can relate to this very easily in relationships is that when you are 
old school term when you're courting someone <laughs> you go on that first date you try to put your you know, your best self i love that term forward i really do courting no but it's just cool yeah <laughs> it's, it's just cool. it's a cool term I, and nobody I, says that anymore well there you go let's get it back let's get it back but i think that's something that um when you focus on the negative, you get in that that little bit of quicksand from that is because it's a lot of times because you stopped doing that. And it's natural. And and sometimes the negative scenarios actually bring it back out in you. But sometimes if you don't do it on the regular, that's where I say be active all the time, whether it be at your job, like the gentleman you're talking about, Nate, at, at your company that he's he's constantly like that's that champion mindset, right? That is that person that every time, every month, every day he wants to do well. And it's partly pride, partly it's to support his family. Whatever his his why is, he's doing it daily. Mm -hmm. And right. I, I think a lot of people, myself included, I struggle with it sometimes, is that you get comfortable in certain areas and you focus on other areas of your life, not realizing you're maybe neglecting other aspects of your life, other relationships, friendships, uh, significant others, uh, maybe your job, because now you think the job's cool. Now I'm going to like make, maybe focus on hobbies and all this stuff. And then the hobbies get in the way of this and... Yeah, I mean, it gets very, very mixed. And it doesn't take long for neglecting to become negating. Yeah. Negating, and that's where that that aspect is. You don't, what have you done for me lately? But I think we're giving too, I think we're giving people too much credit. How so? As far as, <laughs> on an everyday basis, you want to tell me that 80% of the population actually thinks about this shit? I don't know about 80, I don't. I mean, I mean, honestly, Majority, I mean, yeah. I mean, honestly, I mean, in, in, in the fact that like people and, and I don't want to like bring it into a, like a negative because it's not a negative. This is reality. OK, go ahead. Of the fact that. People don't think about this shit. People don't think about what they want to do in the next steps of their life. They don't want to they don't want to th they don't want to think about how they're their next step in life is going to be it, it. Am I going to get married? Am I going to have kids? What's my next job? What am I working towards? Right. Okay. And so, and I want to get they, back to that point. I know, I know you do yeah. because this is something that you've talked about for a very, very long time as being active. You were talking about this fucking two years ago. <laughs> Maybe. And, and it's like, I live in my past, <laughs> but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking know, about the fact, and, and that's not, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm saying when you're, to your point, Steve, actively thinking about what your next step is going to be. So when I remember, like, here we are, we're living in our past. Yeah. I'm going to live. I, I am the one person that will say I live in my past exponentially. How so? All the time. How, because how so? So I... I feed on my past mm -hmm. and, and I, it's not, I don't think it's a good thing, but I don't think it's a bad thing. And, and okay. what I'm, what I mean by that is, is the fact that Steve's talk, Steve's talked about action for a very, very long, very, very long time. As far as his posts, as far as, you know, going to the gym, being focused, doing this now it's the daily walks now it's the daily walks with the dog the old man walks doing all this shit and so this shit it's that's not what i meant i know i'm fucking with you that's not what i meant but what i think about is the fact that my biggest thing and i had my new gm talk to me about it the other day what's that is my age because i mentioned my age a lot and that was one thing that you mentioned to me a long time ago about the podcast right. is my age. Yep. But what I always say to people when they argue with me about, well, why do you say this? And why do you say that about your age? Or what's the chip on your shoulder? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the reason being is because, and I've realized this now being in at burn by Rocky Patel, Indianapolis, realizing with our, bartenders our servers the ones that have experience that are older than me and me being a leader in a leadership role yep trying to conduct 
a symphony of yeah, day-to-day i mean day-to-day operations, operations. but i've realized when i've mentioned that was the worst mistake that i've made since i've been at burn okay is that mentioning my age because if if i say something and they don't respect it in my mind if i was 40 years old there was no there's no way in this world that you would talk back to me but because of the fact that you know that i'm 25 26 years old you think you can talk to me about this shit okay but we're in a cigar lounge right mm-hmm. so the difference between understanding where you're actually at in your life and understanding the principles and and the morals of where your leadership is supposed to be. That doesn't matter. The age, the age shit doesn't matter, but they think it does. So I have to set them straight. Yeah. Do you, do you, See what I'm saying? I do. I do. I I know I'm kind of all over the place. No, no, no. no. I I, I do. Because you you mentioned if you're 40, I am 40. So that's that's the other aspect. And now I think in today's climate of uh, keeping in in the U.S., right? Today's climate, if if you're. If you're you're a young, inspiring. If you're not woke. (laughs) God damn. No, I mean, all right. So it's not just about like politics. But it's like if you are older. And you're talking to a younger person it's the same in a sense if you are younger and talking to an old person yeah it's you, you i think you hit it actually on the head there is that you know yeah you at, at your your current age your time on this earth right you have limited experiences just in volume than someone that is 40 50 60 70 years old when i'm not normal because i like i, I know i know. older shit right but you also, it sounds like since we've had talks like this, which we don't anymore, and I do miss them, obviously, because we used to have those. And and so having you back on here, I think it's it's a great And great I didn't mean to bring this shit up. It, no, I, I think it's it's great because I, I like the fact that it doesn't, you hit what, what in my mind uh, is is absolutely the, the pinpoint. You as a leadership role now at your mid-20s, let's call it that, just yeah. keep it in mid-20s, you might have people that are younger than you, you might have people that are older than you. But when it comes down to it, if you have your head on right, you can appreciate when you speak to someone that is in a, from a hierarchy in the given position, right? Right. Um, whether it be your knowledge on whiskey, your knowledge on cigars, or actually at work and you are a manager and you have an employee that reports to you, age may poke its head but that shouldn't be the end all be all. And both the, the successful communication there is that both parties may have that in the, the outliers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, Hey, you know, you're, you're in your mid twenties, you're talking to a guy that's like 50 and he works, works for you, if you will, yeah. which, in, and there's another conversation right there. If you're the manager, you actually work for your employees. These are all like the semantics and, and, and mindset things right. where you want to do that. I'm not getting in that thing. But if you get to the point where you're talking to these, you're having a discussion with someone, that can introduce itself. It can it can poke its head in there, but that might just be a way to reframe the conversation so that the end goal is is that you succeed, I succeed, the greater good succeeds. Let's not get stuck on the fact that you're twice my age, right? And you have more experience. Not saying it's more experience in that specific, but just more experience because you've had more time on this earth and in whole that's what we're talking about right right that's as, as far it, as a past yeah is people focus on something like that where it's like if you have some somebody that's older than you and you're a younger manager mm-hmm. it doesn't matter i've now i've never been in that situation but i think it's something that I, i've never even thought about my manager's age and right. and past you've always thought about yours uh, well, is what you were saying right but yeah. i've 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 never even thought about my manager's age because they're they're in a leadership role they are above me and that's the principle of the of the actual thing of what we're talking about is is why would <clears throat> why would somebody 
even even in a a regular job, it doesn't matter if you're fucking pissed off about how the business is ran or it doesn't matter if you think something should be ran differently. It, it doesn't matter what the experience is. And on a side note, that's a fucking HR nightmare. Absolutely. With most businesses. Yeah. Um, but as far as like burn goes and as far as my experience, I... It, it's just interesting to see what I've experienced in the last like year and a half and, and seeing how people react to who I am yeah, and, and seeing how I want the business to be ran and seeing how, what, what Rocky really wants. Well, and sometimes those, those differences of opinions could be, uh, because of what the focus is, you know, right. you may have, you may have people that, uh, report to you that are a little more, uh, short sighted or narrow focused and like, you know, they're, they're focused on what's right in front of them, but you as being in a manager or a leadership role, you may have directives that are coming down to you that are a little bit more broad. And so you're trying to, steer things in that direction. Whereas the person reporting to you may be, you know, they may not see that bigger picture. They may not see where you're trying to go. You know, they just, you know, they're just looking at where they're going. They don't realize, you know, what the, what the end goal is. So you're back to communication. And it, sometimes that can be a difference of, you know, how do you communicate that goal? Like, you know, if your manager, you know, if whoever you report to, gets told by Rocky what to do and you tell the people that report to you, you know, those people might sit there and go, well, why? That doesn't make any sense. Well, because this is what Rocky's saying to do. All right. And here's, here's why, like, you know, let's get on board together and not butt heads about it. Like this is where the person in charge wants to go. My job is to get you guys to get on board and go that same direction so that way we're not trying to pull the wagon in two separate directions. The, the single most phrase that I've learned is the fact that when I'm working with our staff is that don't make me be your boss. I, I am a part of the staff and I don't want to be your boss. I got a phrase for you. What do you think we should do? Turn it back on them. Yeah, as far no, as the it's, question, it's not not aggressively. No, it, it, I mean, no, yeah, you say no, like, no, "Why no. turn it back?" No, it, it's because a lot of times people come and they have their ideas, or sometimes people just like to complain. When you're talking about like so this, and we're not off topic, but it's you know getting into this. But I, I think this is something I learned in my my previous career is that people will come to you and they're like, "Hey, we need like this isn't working and all this stuff," and I'm I'm upset about it. I'm, I'm frustrated. You and still all do stuff. it. Yeah. But, I, but it's something that I think that I don't know if you've done it or you may not even realize you've done it with some of your employees is that, you know, it's like they come to you with these issues and you listen to them and all that stuff. I mean, I'm not saying lead with it, but you can have that that persona where it's like if you come to me with an issue. You better an have you better you have a know room. that that maybe the first thing that I tell you or I ask you is that so you don't come to me with an issue unless you come to me with a a a potential solution mm -hmm. because if all you're going to do is come to me and bitch this this conversation is not going to go anywhere because this is the goal of the the company and everything else so you're upset about it that's fine i'll take it in consideration this is not my priority right now but if you come to me what do you think we should do about it and that's the society that hrs have created yeah well and the other thing with that is if if a person only comes to you to complain about something and a leader makes a decision on how to handle it. That person that initially complained about it may not agree with how to handle it. But if that person right. actually comes with a solution, right. And then you come out, then you're, you're actually trying to work together. Right. It, it seems like you're trying to work together more to accomplish the same goal. And then they, that person create... has a better understanding. Right. Cause, cause I had that in my current position several years ago, with a manager, uh, I, I, I did exactly what Steve had said. I 
complained about a problem that I saw within our team. And that person threw it right back at me. Like, okay, what do you think we should do? I'm like, Oh, you're, you're the person in charge. Like, I just want to tell you what the problem is. I figured it was your job to come up with a solution. Right. I'm just going to go with it. And like, no, what do you think we should do? And it was kind of making me think about. And what'd you say? I actually had to, I had to think about it before I actually responded back to her. I think that's a culture thing, right? Where, where it comes to that. This is something that I, uh, to, to kind of round out this part of it is this is typically, I think this is a mindset, right? So from, if you're an employee, if you're the employer or whatever the, the hierarchy is, that, that mindset is, there, there's two sides of this, in my opinion, is that you should have the mentality is that you don't just complain about things. You actually have solutions. You also need to know that sometimes your solution from your position in the relationship, talking about business mainly, but sometimes your solution is not in sync with the overall goal. So you have to also be able to deal with that rejection of just because you come now with a solution. It's like they're just going to go with it. (laughs) Um, I think from a personal level, personal relationships type thing. Don't just complain to a friend or a significant other about what's happening. Come to them with a suggestion of what might be a potential solution. So then all of a sudden that changes the discussion to let's work forward and see how we can compromise, see how we can actually resolve this where both parties may not be a hundred percent, but they actually like, no, it's a good compromise. Business is a lot easier, obviously, because you can just be like, all right, you know, people have a really hard time compromising. They do, and I think a lot of times it, it comes doesn't matter back to, if it's the communication because a lot of times you just you're hey I don't like the way you do this. It's like okay, well, how would you like me to do it? And it's like my way. I'm like, well, um, what what's your way? And like my way is this because I've always that done doesn't it that way. always. And we're talking work. about the past. So, I mean, we used to do that shit with the podcast. Absolutely, we the same thing. Mm-hmm. And and now like look where it's at. I mean, you would, you want to talk about a testament and like coming like full circle as far as the subject. Okay. That's, that's what's happened as far as, as me moving on to something that I knew that I wanted to move on to within Mm -hmm. the cigar industry. I, I, and, and honestly, I think at the time, I think if this wouldn't have happened, I, I still don't think I would have been a part of the podcast. I, e- even if I was still, and, and that's just being real. And that's, that's what comes down to, when we're talking like living beyond the past. It comes mm-hmm. down to being a genuine human being. Okay. As far as understanding realistic aspirations. Yeah. And, and understanding that, you know, like Steve, when he sinks his claws into something, he becomes very, very passionate and I'm the same exact way. Absolutely. Yeah. But this was a podcast that was grown in Steve's garage. This was a podcast that was grown in the Tinderbox, where Steve originated from. Yeah. And I came into being a part of, and, and so did Nate and, And so, but we had different viewpoints and I had, I had a lot of shit that I had to go through, but I don't think if I would have got the opportunity that I did with burn by Rocky Patel, that I would still be a part of the podcast because we were butting heads. Mm. We wanted different things. We had different passions about the podcast, right? And, and that was the way that our journey has been created. And now look at it. You have Patreons, you've created, I mean, look at these fucking banners. There's literally, <laughs> I mean, there's, they're literally saying what we're saying in a text. I mean, this is stuff that, this is stuff that I didn't think about, Steve thought about, and and we're we're living beyond our past, and now we can sit here, and I'm so happy to be yeah, be a part of it, be a part of it still. I you know okay, so 
I'll touch on that real quick. You, you've given, <laughs> I, so I think Jake is a, a prime example and I'm not going to like, you know, go into this full blown, like, uh, not diagnosis, but just analysis, but <laughs> it's the same thing. It's like sociology background. So Jake is one of those, those people that, uh, I've had the absolute pleasure of knowing for many years now and seeing an evolution he's seen an evolution in my life as well and it's been ups and downs on both of our sides and it's it's really cool to see that where you know when we talk about this topic and i i didn't even pick this one i i took your top five that you sent me and i sent it to nate actually today and i said what do you think and he said number four and that was this you know living beyond your live beyond your past as, as time goes on and as your life goes on, it's, it's how you respond to that. And, and Jake has been absolutely, he says blessed. I think he's very fortunate that, um, when I knew him in the past, if you will, because you know, we, a year and a half ago, just, just hear me out. When I, when I, when I knew you in the past, you were in that and you're, you're mentioning these things. Like when someone says, you know, what's your chip on your shoulder? These are, these are things that I've said to you. And, and now you know, you went from being in that role in life and in, in careers and everything else is that you felt as though you knew better because of where you were at. And, and you talked about this is you thought that things should be done this. And you even brought it up is that you didn't have the what's in it. What have you done for me lately? It's what about all that shit I did for you? And then I, I made a mistake or I haven't been doing as much because I've been distracted or whatever it might be. I should have that loyalty right there. Right. And now you've had the opportunity to be on the, in a sense, the other end of it. Yeah. And you've, you've had that opportunity through hard work and everything else. And now you see both sides. This is where I look at someone like you, Jake, is that you live beyond your past. And that's where I brought it up in the beginning of the part two is that don't let the past define you. That is an oversimplification of the topic because the, the past should define you. That's the basis. And then you take the experiences going forward. If all you do is have a chip on your shoulder because someone wronged you, someone fired you, someone cheated on you, someone broke up with you, you went through a hard time, you lost your house, you did whatever it might be, and all you do is just live in the past and you're stuck there, everyone's had that happen in one fashion or another. Everyone's been rejected. Everyone's had that, but you keep, you kept moving forward. And now you've had the opportunity that I've heard you tonight on this podcast and you guys can go back. And I don't know what, what episodes you can start with. Forties. Yeah. Forties. So, yeah. Yeah. Go back to the, the, 40s, the double I was a digits mess. of this, right? Forties. I was a mess. Listen to the mentality of this guy sitting next to me and how he talks now. He didn't just forget his past. He didn't move forward. He didn't just cut it off. Uh, Jonathan said this, and I know people like this, that you just live in the present. I got to scroll back here a little bit. Um, I'm the opposite. I've got to force myself to comp contemplate the past. Definitely a living in the present guy, huge weakness and strength. You're right, Jonathan, because that is not something. If you just negate your past and you just forget about it and you just cut it off, put it in the rearview mirror and be like, fuck that you're not actually moving forward. You're not growing. You're not evolving. Jake, on the other hand, so far, what I've heard tonight, and again, we don't talk all the time no. as much as we used to because we're both busy and we're doing our own thing. But that's what I love about it is that hearing you now is that you've taken all of that past. You didn't just let it define you and just like live in it. But now you, you hearing you, you speak tonight, it's you, you include it. Yeah, because in your thought process, you include it in your mentality, you include it in the things that now in a new role, a new opportunity, a new new city, new yeah. job. You've been able to cultivate this wonderful relationship with your girlfriend, you got this life together. So you have the some of the consistencies of your past. Yeah. And then you've also taken some of the things that may have really hindered you from moving forward. And now you're actually including them in your mindset. That's where I looked at the topic of don't uh, or, or live beyond your past is when I hear the way you said that it wasn't the don't let the past define you like the the motivational speakers. It's not the same shit. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. It's live beyond it. Take it with you. 
right and grow from it that's what i love about this 100 the way you worded that is i've done it and you embrace the past so that the present and hopefully the future but really the present is that you embrace those things when you yeah. go through these things like some of the negatives or you're resting on your laurels on the positive it's like great take a second you won the championship awesome next season's around the corner what are you going to do that's a great analogy the, the past is part the past makes you what you are but it's not what you are because who you Can are I explain that who you are today is the summation of all of your experiences good bad and different so any so your past whether good or bad still makes up who you are today but that doesn't have to define who you are today like you are not just the negatives of your past you are not just the positives of your past you are who you are today because of everything you have experienced up until this point but you're not defined by any one of those things correct <clears throat> we've got some comments here you know um Ian says, again, this subject is different for me. I'd love to cut it off and never see it again. There are some things that you do that with, and, and I think everyone's different. If you do it too simply, I will say that it's not going to be gone. You have to embrace it. If you just cut it off and hope to never see it again, you're going to wake up some morning and someone's going to remind you, and it's going to it, likely it will trigger you, and you'll probably affect your, your current presence. So I, I think it, you really do have to embrace it, and I'm, this is not a – um, I'm not giving you advice here to a point that it's a therapist type thing, but I know there's different mentalities for different people and, and everything works differently for, for every different person on how you actually can be healthy mentally. But the living beyond your past, I, I really like that, that the way it was said, I really think that and Jake, I'm really happy to have you back on the podcast hearing you talk like this because I, you know, you gave me a lot of compliments uh, earlier about podcasts and stuff like that. But I'll say this is that the mentality, seeing you now, um, and hearing, more importantly, hearing the mentality, it's it's super impactful for me. And if anyone knows you from back then, listen to the podcast, was friends with you when you lived here and all that stuff, and to see you doing what you're doing now, and Full disclaimer, you're going to have disappointment in your life going forward. It just happens. You know what I mean? We don't yeah. know what it is, whether it be job, relationship, whether it be, um, you know, uh, loss yeah. in any fashion. But the way that you're talking about things in, in life now, it's 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 different. And I like that. That's living beyond your past. But you have not ruled out everything that you used to think. No. And, and I think... I think what's really changed for me was the fact that one thing I, I really want to touch on is the fact that what you said, Steve, was the fact that like living beyond your past is a fact that like people think, especially like my old boss, like Corey Gregory and, and, and people that have made, they're very successful people. And I, I've been around a lot of very, very successful people. And, and they want to say, just shut out the negative, just shut out everything. Yeah. And, and that's not, that's not correct in my opinion. Okay. Because if you shut out the past and shut out, shut out these, these lessons in life that you were supposed to learn that God put on this earth that you were supposed to learn from, then you're not able you're not able to learn from them and and if you you forget about those things you 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 leave yourself vulnerable mm -hmm. and and you you have to take those those experiences those lessons with you mm -hmm. and learn from them and so like for me like like as an example um and i'm kind of I'm kind of getting emotional about it is the fact that, you know, you're like, you're talking about like losing people and the fact that, you know, like tonight I'm using my grandfather's lighter. Yeah. 
you know, I've lost, I've lost both my grandfathers in the last year. And one was 90 years old. Condolences, but cheers. One was 90 years old and the other was, uh, he wasn't even my blood grandfather, but he was a saint in my eyes. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I lost him during COVID and I wasn't even able to touch him. Yeah. You know, and, uh, last time you were in town, last time I was in town and, uh, and he, he, I live my life now after he passed because he was such a great man. And I live my life now to what he would want me to be. Um, so I, I think beyond it, like, you know, Steve used to talk about having your hand in your face and not being able to see beyond like your pissed off stage and not being able to see beyond like your anger and everything. And I still get that way. I still do. Cause I'll, I, I'll, I'll always be that way. Right. And that's something, you know, Robert Crow and <laughs> Rob, Rob and I've ha have had a lot of, a lot of arguments that have been good. Yeah. And, but he's not wrong. Cause I was thinking about it and I actually got kind of like literally hot when he said that people don't change. And I'm like, well, that's not fucking true. But then I'm thinking to myself and I'm like, no, people don't change. They just become more aware. And he's, he's absolutely right. Where people, people don't, change they just become more aware of their actions and how people react to their actions people have an opportunity to grow right and, and and it's not that's not a negative at all it's just that's how human beings are and in the way that the way that each other that we interact with each other and the way that people interact with each other is how based on their past experiences with life and based on their, the way that they are grown up and the way that their lessons are in life, that's how they interact with other people. Yeah. And, and that can form how other people act. Yeah. I mean, to think about the exponential like way of the cosmos works is actually insane. Um, but I think that the way that, people are more aware of how they act and, and the way that we have to navigate this cosmos. It, you have to have a whole heart and have to have, you have to keep yourself safe and keep yourself guarded, but you have to recognize real. You have to recognize raw people that okay. come into your life as far as with whiskey and cigars. And that's one of the biggest, that's one of the, biggest things that like this podcast and the people like us condone. And even though people in the outside world think that it's wrong, this cigars, whiskey is the biggest equalizer. Yeah. And, and people need to understand that. It, it represents just in general, a common bond. Yes. And, and it, slowing and down to, yes. to open Amen. yourself up. Amen. And and I just, I, I truly think the times that I was on this podcast before and I'd bitch about dumb shit and it wasn't, it wasn't <laughs> dumb shit and get pissed off about shit. And it was stuff that was important. And I know, but the stuff that we used to talk about and get in arguments about, and I think about it now and it's because I had a fucking cloth over my face and, and that was my reality at the time. And, and all as it takes, all it takes, and this, this is, will be my full circle yeah. for a second. And I know I've been talking for a long you're time. You're fine, man. But Dude, it, you're the guest tonight. It, <laughs> at the time, that was my reality. That's what I dealt with. That's, that's what people deal with, the listeners, the viewers. That's what they deal with every day. <laughs> And even though that they're negative, even though that they're in these dark moments, 
if they if they say something as far as what their goals are, as far as what they want in life, if somebody just gives them a little bit, just a small chance, an opportunity, it changes their entire perspective. 100%. And it's a beautiful thing because then they change as a person. You change from a person from looking at the world negatively while also having these backward mindsets of saying, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this, but I can't because of this. Yeah. And then that one person, like for me, like Rob Wilson from Rocky Patel, like Rocky, like my director of operations, Steve Drenth says this, this guy's got something. Yeah. And a year and a half later, I look at my life, a completely different man. And that, that is a difference. And for those that think that they're on their last leg yeah. and are bitching to people and complaining about life, just think for a second about what your goals are that if you just hold on for just a little, little bit more, that next step is literally right around the corner. So I don't know if I ever told you this. And, uh, Ian's got, you got some great comments out there, Ian. I, I wanted to throw it up there, but uh, and Robert Crow, why does he fuck up everything? <laughs> just does, drink. I'm going to drink. Cheers to you. No, 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 no he's playing that. the game that Jonathan Herring brought up. <laughs> um, you brought up Rob Wilson. I, I want to add to this is you, you in, in this, you were talking about if, if only someone gives you that. And I remember those conversations in the past that you you talked about that a lot. You know, I just I just someone give me a chance. Someone give, you know, I, I'm, I said I'm that every day, all the every podcast, time. every podcast. I had a conversation with Rob Wilson one day. And they, you know, he's like, hey, um, you're very, I don't, I don't think I've ever told you this. So why not do it live? Um, Let's be real. He had, he had called me up and he's like, hey, man, I want to talk to you about Jake. I'm like, what, what, are you, what are you, what about? He's like, you know, we're struggling to find a humidor manager at the new burn. Did I tell you this? Yeah, you told me. It's a great. I think it's a good story. It's amazing, and I think this is something that it's has nothing to do with me. But I'm talking about you. It has everything to do with you. Doesn't listen to what I'm saying here. Is that when um, Rob Wilson reached out to me and he said, "You know, Jake seems like a solid dude. You know him really well. You guys do the podcast together. You guys have been friends for a while, and all that stuff." And he's like, "You know, we're looking for the humidor manager, and we can't get anyone to really want to like move out to Indy that's not already there. There's no talent out here to do this." And his name keeps coming up. What do you think about Jake being a humidor manager? And I said, as far as passion, cigars, whiskey, great fit. Who he is as a person, hard worker, great fit. Comes to outside the cigar shop. I said, work ethic seems good. Because again, friend, and I, we had a lot of conversations. Um, as far as paperwork, I fucking suck ass. I, I did tell you the story. <laughs> I didn't know. No, I, my, my point was, is like, I don't know what's involved in the job, but I don't know how he is with computer work, with, uh, um, you know, holding himself accountable, holding other people. I don't know what his management skills are. I don't know. I don't know all this stuff. And I gave the most honest referral as a friend. And at that time, be, based on Tinderbox, that so you work in part time there, you know what I mean? It's like, as a, manager is like this is where i'm at with jake as a person if you guys have a good training program and have very specific metrics on what you expect <laughs> i think he would probably do well but i can't vouch for that because i have not experienced that so this is my only question mark as far as jake sanders goes and he told me he's like okay good enough for me because it was honest I didn't say don't hire him. I didn't say hire him. I said, this is my honest opinion. But you were fucking real. That's my point is that the only thing that you left out in that that analogy, that story of your life is that, yes, you got the chance. And yes, at that time, you know, we, we you talked about the other jobs and like, you know, like you wanted that chance, all that chance. But when 
it wasn't just about being given the opportunity. The one thing you left out was you were down this road of passion and hard work and, and enthusiasm about an industry that lined up with something you wanted to do. And right. then that opportunity came, you still have to keep that hard work up. And I've lit the fire. So that's my point is that you still have to keep doing it. Now, you can't just wait for that opportunity. You can't live in the past where you haven't given you haven't been given that opportunity yet. You know what I mean? It's the same thing as a, a, a relationship. You don't I'm not going to open myself up for anyone else because I've been hurt before. And things have failed. I don't want to give myself to an employer because, you know, like I got fucked over. I got screwed over by my last boss. So, that's a great point. so screw these people, anyone that's going to, there's that mentality out there, that entrepreneurship mentality that works for a lot of people. I don't want to work for anyone else. Do you not want to work for anyone else? Or do you don't want to work for the person that or the people that you've worked for in the past? Oh, that's a great point. Same thing. I don't, I'm going to be single the rest of my life. Why? Cause it didn't work out before. But now you're talking about grow up. You're, you're defining your present by your past. That's what I'm saying. You, you, in your mentality, what you were saying, and I'm trying to give a little bit of credit that you kept plugging away, you kept doing something. So then when the opportunity, the opportunity will, won't arise. That's what I'll say. The opportunity for you in your current situation, that would have never been an opportunity if you didn't do what you were doing at that time. But what did yeah. you, what, what did you that, say to me? A minute? Does that make sense though? What, you, what, you can't, you, you can't assume that, opportunities are going to be just given to you that they're just going to be thrown your way. And like, that is you, what is going on right now. In my, my opinion yeah, with the younger generation, you have to work. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a handout. Yeah. Like, it's not, you, you can't be mediocre at what you do and expect to advance and expect greater opportunities to come. Like you actually have to bust your butt and earn those opportunities because it, otherwise those opportunities are going to go to someone else who has put in the effort, someone who's yeah. put in the sweat equity. And it, it may be someone who's been at the, you know, in the industry or at that company less time than you, there was an opportunity there, but you didn't do the things that you needed to do to take advantage of that opportunity. So you, you can't just sit there and, like, I mean, for example, for me, I can't sit there and go, oh, I've I've been at this team. I've been on this team the longest. You know, the next time the manager role of this team comes up, I should get it because I've been here the longest. No, I got to put in the actual work, but then also build myself to actually fit that role and, and be the person to be in charge of the team when it comes up again. Or if I want to go to a different team or a different position, like I gotta, I gotta prepare myself and build myself up for that position, and then once I do get it, I have to work to keep it. So, what are your goals now, Nate? What in, in what arena? It, it, <laughs> as as far as your main job right now, it, as far as understanding what has happened in the past, because I know the studio audience and the video audience has and and me and Steve have listened to the LFD experience and that was total bullshit and and listening to all the stuff that has happened with your new gig what what's the goals and what what do we need to see I mean so I I still have goals of advancing with the company that I'm at um as far as well, I mean, whether it be management or uh, another position, there have been other positions uh, that I wasn't I wasn't even given a chance at. Um, there was one uh, year and a half ago where uh, they were going to be hiring a new person for this position or for this other team, and I wanted to go to that team. And I figured, with my experience and how long I'd been with the company and my work ethic, like. I, I thought I would have a chance. Uh, and that's a fucking bumper sticker. <laughs> I thought I would definitely have a chance. Bobby Crow says there's always an opportunity. It just comes down to how hard you want it. Go on. Does he know so, a printer? 
So, I know <laughs> so there was an opportunity that came up within the company, and I even talked to the manager of that team, and he's like, "Yeah, you know, you've been here, you know the industry, like, yeah, I definitely want to interview you for that position." And then the next time I followed up, they're like, "Oh no, we saw someone else's resume. That was the only person we interviewed, and we're just going to hire that person." This was a ADP. Yeah, yeah. This was this was at AEP. Like they 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 interviewed one person for that role, and and all they did was they they looked at their resume on paper, and like nope, that's who we're gonna hire. And Fucking stupid. I I I was absolutely pissed off because I was told I was gonna get an opportunity, man, yeah. and I wasn't given the chance to, you know, earn that position. <clears throat> were they more qualified? They had more experience in a, a particular subset okay. of the role, but not the role as a whole. Um, and for a short period of time, that absolutely pissed me off. And there was there was a brief period of time where I was like, why the fuck am I working this hard? If yeah. I'm not going to get anywhere, if no one's going to give me the opportunity, why am I doing why am I sh so stressed out about doing the day-to-day -day stuff? Why am I putting in so much effort with all this stuff? But then eventually I just sat there and went, you know what? That opportunity has gone. Maybe in the future down the road, that opportunity will present itself again. I can't change the fact that they pick someone else. Mm -hmm. So right. what can I do now? Right. I'm going to bust my ass. I'm going to do the absolute best I can right now. Yeah. And I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to keep outperforming every single other person. And if that other person they hire does, does well at the role, good for them. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to let that loss define who I am. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep winning at what I do. And whether an opportunity comes up within the company or outside the company, I'm going to bust my ass to earn it, not wait for it to be given to me. I'm going to earn that next opportunity. I think that's very relevant to what we're talking about, obviously, is that this is something that, you know, you, you don't necessarily live in the past, but you live beyond your past. And that's why I asked that is that, you know, what were like, were they, were they more qualified? Because I've got a friend that's been looking for, for work for, for a while and I'm not going to mention any names, but the one thing that I actually, he's, he's so dialed in that like through LinkedIn, he sees who, who has gotten the positions that he has applied for. And he's like, I get it. I do great at this job, but they, they're more qualified. If they have experience in these areas that that's what they were looking for. But, it doesn't doesn't really take away the the burn, it doesn't take away the the rejection. But you got to keep keep plugging away, I guess. Like you're saying, Nate. I mean, at a certain point, though, if if a if a company, if a uh, significant other, just keeps striving for the next step, and you know, and keeps looking just for the future, that's that's sometimes where the miss is. The miss is because it's not growth. It's it's more of the grass is greener mentality, in my opinion. I don't know. I think a qualification is bullshit. <laughs> I think a resume carries a lot of I mean, you can I think a resume in a in a corporate world, yes. I realize that. All right, what are you talking about but, then? But us three sitting right here, we don't live in a corporate world. And and so... Nate does. We don't. <laughs> Nate does now. I, I get you're it. You're more corporate than I am. <laughs> a little bit. Well, I mean, the thing I say is, I mean, that person that they hired for that role, I know I can do just as good a job as that person. Yeah, but despite what our differences on our resume may be, yeah. I know I can learn and adapt and I can learn a new, a, a new job. I can learn a new skill. 
But I'll tell you, and, I'll I, play, can perf- and I can perform that just as well. I'll play devil's advocate. How do they know that? It's they don't. It they don't. But it, it's just a, it's, it's a calculated it's, risk. But it's it's a, it's a, it's a, it's the same exact thing as when you're looking at you know look at look at we're talking about a completely different industry and and we're we're all in the same kind of industry not not Nate like full time yet he was <laughs> um but it it's one of those things where you <laughs> Just thanks, Steve. Really, thanks, Steve. I'm switching over. My iPad was done. It, it, it's one of those things where I think I am so, and I talk about this all the time with guests at Burn. Is is like Ryan and Ryan who? Ryan Newman. So he's the uh, the manager over at Royale Cigar Lounge here in Columbus, Ohio, Hilliard area. Yeah. Where where was he at before, Steve? Uh, Tinderbox at Easton in Columbus, Ohio. Goddamn, One of our sponsors. Goddamn right. And Tyler Jones and myself. If you're talking about the next generation of cigar guys, cigar people, and and within a year, that's what I think about. Within a year us three moved on to what we were genuinely wanting to do. Right. Two of us came from the same place. Yeah. And that yeah. was Tenderbox at Easton. And now look at Ryan at Royale. He's been given the keys. Yeah. He's busting his ass. He's doing what he loves. I was given the chance. I'm busting my ass, giving the keys. Now Tyler's with Espinosa and he's busting the ass. No, you're right. And 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 we never thought two years ago, us three, I can tell you that right now. Two years ago, we never thought we were ever even gonna get the chance. So why are you there? We're there now because we pursued and talked to people. We networked. We you sat there and you st- well, yeah, but most people don't think that working in a cigar shop is work. I get that most days. Yeah. <laughs> so like us sitting there t- smoking a few cigars, talking and networking. It's like doing a podcast. Like, what, what, yeah. What is that? This ain't work. This is fun. Yeah. And that's the glory about it. Yeah. But to think about it as like a young man, like it's so absolutely amazing. Yeah. How all three of us have came and two of us coming from the same shop. Two of us listening to Nate, Steve, Brian, all these guys that have been there at Tinderbox at Easton and giving their all, even they don't think they do. Right. And listening to the testimonies of guests and customers. Yeah. And doing what they love. What it really boils down to is figuring out for me, it really bo- it really boils down to the fact that us three took what we knew yeah and we pursued it yeah that's all it was even though the friends and the family that was around us went through hell because we were all fucking bitching no, constantly no shut up Const- constant constant Harry says with Jake and Tyler the Midwest Cigar is in good hands. Tyler <laughs> says, that's my boy. Preach it. And Tyler knows because now he lives in Indy. I mean, think about that oh, shit. I, I see the Instagram stories. Think about that shit for a second. Now you have two of the youngest guys in the cigar business living in Indy. Indy's fucked. I wish I was in the cigar business. <laughs> and, and to Nate's point, It just goes back. I I think back to my interview. The funniest thing about my fucking interview was the fact that think about this for a second. My interview with my director of cigar operations was at Stogie's Smoke Shop in Dayton, Ohio, a Huber Heights. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. With my GM at the time and my director of cigar operations, 
the funniest fucking thing was, was the fact that I showed up and I was actually late. Perfect. Showed up. Uh, side note, show up on time. <laughs> yes. Especially the first impression. <laughs> yes. <laughs> showed up late. If you can. Showed up late. Tyler Jones. Yes. Was. Who's been on the podcast. Sitting, sitting at the table with Robbie. The owner of Stogie Smoke Stop. Right. At the fucking table. And we all sat there literally during my interview. I had two guys <laughs> sitting at my interview that had no reason being there. You got a fan club. And I'm, <laughs> yeah. And then. Oh, who are these guys? <laughs> yeah. Have you heard of groupies? Entourage. <laughs> Entourage. Entourage. Yeah. It's fucking. Those guys, don't worry about those guys. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> go on. It's insane. Let's talk about the job. And then don't we go through don't the them though. We go through in the entire interview. I I drive back to Columbus at the Bluestone and watch Aaron Lewis as a, at a concert. Nice. All right. And then a year and a half later, Tyler accepts a position with Espinosa Cigars. Yeah. And literally moves out to Indy. Yeah. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. I agree. <laughs> and the fact that, and I don't want to talk about this. People should think our viewers and, and your listeners, they should think this and take it to their own industry because okay. it's not just cigar industry. It's right. not just whiskey industry, but we put ourselves in those places on purpose. It may not seem like a lot of work. It may not seem like a, a very hard thing to do. Okay. But we put ourselves in those places. I think we networked. We sat there. We smoked cigars. We talked to the right people. We reached out to the right people. And that's why Rob called you. I don't know why he called me. I just want to help moving recently. Would you just shut the fuck up? <laughs> and I and, helped him on. Uh, no, there's a there's a very good reason why Rob called you. Yeah, because I loaded I know, his like, truck to move. I, I know Steve. Has nothing to do with I know Steve likes talking about himself a lot, but when on on a secondary note, he doesn't fucking realize the the responsibility that he has for young tobacconists. Yeah. The impact that he has on reps, the respect that he has on reps, you don't fucking realize it. So, <laughs> well, that's why Ryan, the, you've you've literally that's, created. That's why Ryan Jones out there in Illinois is like, hey, where can I sign up? Because he, he's referring to the fact that two of the people that have worked at the Tinderbox while Steve's been the manager there have gone on to either be a humidor manager or a cigar rep. And Ryan's like, yes, hey, where, I, can, where know, can I get, where can I sign up? How can me. I get that gig? I mean, that's, that's Brian. I mean, that's his, his baby. You but know? it's both you. Yeah. I still, I still talk. I still talk. And we're talking, we're like living beyond your past. Yeah. But the past we've, you grow with it. That's the you thing. grow with it. But I still talk about the stories about the fact that there was one night that Brian Invited everybody over to his house there you go. south of Sunbury. There you go. And had a massive bonfire. And I still have the picture. We had 20 bottles of whiskey yeah. sitting out by the fire. Damn. I and that was that. that was one of the best fucking nights. It was great. That we ever had as I worked in Ohio, as I worked at the tender box. And and there's things like that that should not go unheard that's great so i i know i've gone through a no, million good. fucking you're... different things no, I love but it. this this is the testament this is the shit that steve and i have done mostly steve no as far as the bourbon and bs community th this has grown to something that i it, it started as two guys drinking whiskey on a Wednesday and a couple cigars and talking about life. 
So the only thing I'll say about that real quick is, is that when we started this podcast, Jake and I, and, and he wanted, he, you wanted to do a um, podcast, right? This was your, your idea. And I said, I'm not going to waste my time doing one of a hundred whiskey review podcasts or star <laughs> review podcasts. <laughs> the truth of the matter is, is, is the first part's good. The second part is talking about life. Shit show. No, no, there's well, a purpose. No, but the, <laughs> the point was, I know that's a purpose. But it's a shit show. I had to twist your arm. You did it. And that's was, that was always the, 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 that was always the, the budding heads. Right. So, um, that's the full circle right there is that the reason you're, you, you know, you were a part of this. You saw it. You, you didn't see h- how to get there, right? No, and, I didn't. And now you see it coming back is we're not changing the world here. This is just, this is amplifying what's already out there. You know what I mean? Given it, a, given the tool belt to do that. Um, What I love about what you're saying that you can you can actually no matter what industry you're in, if you're listening to this, it's not just about the cigar industry. It's not just about the whiskey industry. It's it's that's what the part two is about. That's where we're at right now is that it's it's the fact that. Live beyond your past is is a conversation that Jake, you and I had years ago. In a matter of speaking, that you always get to this point, this is what what life's about and that's why we we have this and you talk about real shit right so that's all it is and nate had to use the facilities but and i, I want to get him a part of this I, so. I, but not to interrupt steve i but, really yeah. get tired of talking i really get tired of talking to people about dumb shit <laughs> i really get tired of well, you got the rest of your life for that so. i really get well i i <laughs> Don't, don't give I'm, up on it. No, I'm not going to give up on it, but I'm going to be really pissed off because it. I really get tired of people talking about dumb shit. The fact that you think about life in a realistic tone and think about the spirits and the cigars that we enjoy that are created by love and passion and hours of hard work. Yeah. And we're just sitting here enjoying them. And it lets us find ourselves as yeah. men and women, whatever pronoun you want to use. All right. That's that's something special. And and and, and I really just don't think people take it to that level they don't allow themselves to to do that um and and i'll introduce this this is you're familiar with this this part of it jake is you know i know i didn't realize you didn't really know about the the rating part of the end of part one part two we end with closing remarks and uh there's a a little bit of summary and there's also a, a bit of probably some new information coming out there Nate, what are you smoking there? What's that look like? It's like an unbanded BS. It is. That's Robusto? Is that a Robusto Gold? It is. That's right. That's a beautiful cigar. Mm-hmm. So, wake up, Sean. Talk, everything that we talked about, closing remarks, I, I do want to say living beyond your past, take everything we talked about, guys, and for the listeners, and for us at the table in the garage, how do we go forward with this? Because that is actually the topic at, at hand is living beyond your past. So, and I want you guys both, Nate, Jake, business, we, we harped on business, careers and everything else. Personal relationships, we did not really touch on a whole lot. The age old thing is, is like I mentioned it at one point and there's, there's a guy that that's part of the bourbon and BS community and I know him really well. And, um, 
he posts something that really, really strikes a chord with me is when he gets his wife flowers and he, he posts it. And I don't think it's because he's looking for like pats on the bad back or, or, you know, that his wife sees that he's posting it. It's just this encouragement that even after decades of a relationship, he still tries and I'm sure he fails at times, you know, on, on the relationship level of being married and everything else. But one of the things he tries to do is he still tries to get some flowers. There's that effort there. It's not a matter of if, if you believe that buying flowers is a, a good use of money or a bad use of money, but it's just something that there's a there's this level of that action, right? There's a constant action. There's a constant effort. And um, I'll put that out to you guys as closing remarks and also the the fact that you have to put that effort in. And, and, and we talked about earlier on in part two is the, the what have you done for me lately concept. Nate, I know you've been taking some notes. So go ahead. <laughs> Before we steal your, your notes. <laughs> Sorry to. No, no, you're fine. Um, he gets upset sometimes. I just rattle it off. And, I, and he's like, oh, he stole my notes. So I just start checking them off. Like, oh, no, that's been said. I know I've been taking talking for a long time. No, you're fine. You're good. Um, whether your past is positive or negative, it can be a ball and chain. Yeah. Because it can slow you down, drag you down, bring you to a complete halt from going forward. If that's all you're living in, whether the, the positive things that have happened to you or the negative things that can happen to you, that can prevent you from growing, from getting to uh, the next step. The, the, whether the past, and I, I, I'll use all three tenses in one sentence, the past, whether good or bad, should drive your future now. The, okay. the things that have happened in your past that were negative should drive you to do better in the future. The things that were good in the past should drive you to build off of those going forward. Because as I said earlier, all of your experiences in the past, whether good or bad, make you who you are today. Yeah. So they they are part of who you are, but they don't have to define who you are. You get the choice to actually decide who you are going forward from this moment on and what you do from this moment on. You don't have to do the same thing you've always done. Uh, you you don't always you don't have to stick in the same career that you've always done. Um, you know, I I went to I went to college for a particular degree and my first job out of college was working in that in, in that field and I have not worked in that industry in 8 years yeah because I have the first thing I did was I actually took an opportunity uh in a passion I took a job that was a passion of mine that mm -hmm. I wanted to do it didn't work out so then I, I, I did what I needed to do, but then once I got something, the opportunity that then presented itself, whether it may or may not be what I want to do, I'm using the best qualities of me to do the best I can in that industry. There, there are certain things I can bring to the table because of my past that can make me succeed in that industry. Yeah whether that's what I want to do long-term or not is irrelevant. I still use who I am to succeed in that, that role currently. Um, so let, let your negative inspire positive change and let your positive drive you to continue that. I like that. Jake. It's nice. It's nice, Nate. <laughs> I'm 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 great at one liners for the end. <laughs> Can I steal one of those BS? I'll reimburse. Yeah, I bet. 
Just take one, please. Oh, if I'd have known that, I would have lit up one of those. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Instead of one of mine. So uh, these are good. What's our What's our topic again? Live beyond your path. <laughs> Live. What's your topic? <laughs> <laughs> An outlaw state of mind. No, no. <laughs> you want to, nah, you're gonna introduce too much there. I don't want to. So see living I beyond your past. Live yeah. beyond your past. And, Live beyond your past. And I, I know one of the things I was thinking of, Jake, before you get started, is during all the time you were in the pot, you were on the podcast. You had a lot of ups and downs. You had a lot of changes. I had a lot of downs. Well, I mean, you you went from doing a lot of videos in in your first industry, then you were selling funeral plots. Yeah. You know, you were working at the center box and then you're where you are now. It was a lot of downs. Um, so Steve knows this from when we started the podcast. I, I, I really don't like being this motivational thing. Um, and so I'm going to, make my closing remarks as a, as an example. Um, so Steve was talking about how he didn't touch upon uh, a lot of personal uh, items, I guess, relationships. You, yeah. relationships. yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I think of this as uh, living beyond your past. Um, so for example, so my girlfriend and I have been together for seven years. Jeez. Isn't that long? Um, I'm going to say five, but I, I've been gone for a year and a half. So that makes sense. Yeah. I, yeah. That, cause, cause that math adds up a lot. Close enough. Round up. So, so I, I fell in love with Alicia and, uh, 2014 and so when when i said that i wanted to enter into the cigar industry at, at full time she came with me in yep. indy um luckily her business allowed her to work from home um, so the whole COVID thing did not affect us at all. And that was absolutely amazing. Um, however, she hates her job and, uh, she wants to do something different. Um, but there's nights like last night, literally last night where when I close at burn by Rocky Patel, Indianapolis, I don't close till we close the doors at 2 PM or 2 AM. And I don't end my closing duties until 3 a.m. So when I sit down and have a cigar and have a drink, I may have a couple people sitting beside me. And before you know it, it's 6 a.m. Well, I come home. I didn't get home till 7 a.m. last night. This morning. This morning. <laughs> Thanks for being here. And... As a wonderful and beautiful woman that Alicia is, she questions it, obviously. Says, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, well, I'm just sitting there smoking scars and drinking whiskey and talking about life. And she, bless her heart, she tries to understand it, but she doesn't, she doesn't really understand it. And I've, t I've been telling her this for years is Steve and I met each other. We did the same thing. And she say, was she say like Steven in town. Or yeah. Something? Yeah. <laughs> and, and she just didn't, she just doesn't understand it, and that's fine. But when I'm driving home and it takes me a half an hour to get home, I know where I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be in bed with her. Mm -hmm. and so I think about I think about the bullshit that Steve and I used to argue about this fucking podcast 
great plug, we used to great plug for the podcast. <laughs> we used to argue about what we should do with this fucking podcast. We used to argue about this dumb shit that just it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What matters is is the whiskey. It matters is the cigars. It matters. What matters is the friendship. It matters the guys and the girls and the people sitting around enjoying themselves when no one else is and talking about life. And that was one thing that Steve added to this podcast that I did not recognize when we first started this whole thing. And, and that's what I tell Alicia. That's what I tell my girlfriend is that when you're sitting around with like-minded people drinking good whiskey, smoking good cigars, there's nothing better. And it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter if you're in the Caribbean. It doesn't matter if you're in Columbus, Ohio. That is the place to be at that time. And you will figure out your life in that moment. And you will wake up the next morning saying, what the fuck am I doing with my life? And you'll figure it out. Yeah. And, and she understands it. Alicia understands it. And lucky man. And I think that's something that, we've created with this podcast is something that Steve and Nate and Dustin have, have created with this podcast since I've been gone. Mm -hmm. And it's something that shouldn't be looked over and there's nothing else like it. And, and, and living beyond your past, Mm -hmm. Meaning means taking from what we've done with this podcast from the very beginning to the start of drunken nights on whiskey Wednesdays, yeah. where you buy a bottle the one week I buy a buy I buy a bottle the next week we smoke cigars we talk about life and now what episode are we on one sixty five think about that shit I know. <laughs> A lot of nice and here, <laughs> here, here you are. Here I am. Here you are. And there's not a goddamn thing wrong with it. It's absolutely perfect, and that's the way life should be. So I'm absolutely blessed to be back here, and I appreciate the bourbon and BS community for growing. And I appreciate Steve and Nate and Dustin for growing the community. And I, uh, I want to create something else on my own. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's pretty amazing. So congratulations. Thank you. Just make sure you don't neglect what you have. I'm drinking whiskey. What are you talking no, about? You, you've got a great person at home. <laughs> I do. Make no, sure this is amazing. Make sure you share moments with her too. Yeah, she needs to drink more whiskey. That's her problem. She started drinking vodka, and I don't know what the fuck that's that, about. That's an so sit on the you. patio. You have a whiskey. She has a vodka. That's an opportunity. Yeah, there's something wrong with that. That's an but, opportunity for you to learn about vodka. <laughs> is the way we say that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hang on. Don't. That's how we say that. You learn more about vodka you grow i don't need to know jack shit about vodka <laughs> high end uh bar there yeah you do <laughs> someone asked, i said it to someone the other day it's like yeah it's like it's so weird when when like people ask like i want to uh, tito's and vodka and like they don't really ask for that i was like yeah that they do all the fucking they're fucking time. idiots still still tito's and vodka <laughs> they're fucking idiots really oh yeah that's a thing they do. that's just a glass of vodka <laughs> they're idiots yeah, no it's a hundred percent it's a tito's and club soda is what that is they're idiots <laughs> you charge it for two vodkas 
So thank you Ugh. for having me back. Oh, I'm happy to have you anytime. You know, you got to you got a chair here. Um, part two, close your marks as my dog is barking his head off. So we got to close it off here so we can get him out in the garage. Um, <laughs> Sean, go take care of the dog. Living beyond your past. Uh, the biggest thing for that is, is that I will really summarize with the fact that it's it's bringing your past with you, but in a, in a in a constructive way. It's not positive, negative. It's constructive. So, if you are one of those that that just ties it off and just says "fuck it, I'm out" and does it, it's gonna it's gonna poke its head back into your life. You'll have another chapter ending at some point in your life. That's my opinion. I think if you actually embrace it and you you look around you, you talk about the 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 negative, the positive, the the sorrow, the the joy, no matter what it was of that that relationship, the the job, uh, the experience, the growing beyond your past. It was a great again, Jake. I say this the way you said it, even though you don't necessarily remember. Um, <laughs> Tonight, <laughs> no. When you sent me those 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 topics, you said, "Oh, did I say that?" <laughs> yeah, no. It's it's grow beyond your past. The way it was worded is perfect. You grow beyond it. It's that again. I go back to that champion mentality that you you're always working. You're always striving to be better. The roadblocks can be very very small, or they can be debilitating. <laughs> I would look at everything as if they were debilitating because that's when you actually, hopefully, maybe not first, but hopefully at some point you, in a healthy manner, you you go through the emotions, you go through the the feelings of of why the past is not what you have now, and when you have that positive, like you were talking about, Nate, is that when you 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 win that championship when you 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 win the big game you 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 land the the girl of your dreams that's not the end game you got to keep them that's that you got to keep going well like in a relationship when you, when, you got to keep the girl you got to keep the girl when we talked about fitness in this podcast many many times and it's one of those things it's like oh yeah 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 no i, I used to used to be in great shape it's like okay what happened well, life got in the way i was like how you feeling? Shit. Feel like shit, man. Cool. You going to the gym? I'm going to. When? I I'm I'm going to. That's the whole thing. Live beyond your past is is growing. This whole topic could be really summarized in my my opinion as we all evolve and you have some control over the evolution of where your life goes. If you give up on the control, then it will spiral. Hopefully for the positive, but likely downhill. Yeah. You're going to be fat, miserable, out of shape, diabetic, upset, and alone and not happy with your job <laughs> yeah if you accept responsibility <laughs> what are you fucking waiting on this is a dramatic pause you guys are all on your phones jesus I, I was reading a comment if you accept responsibility i was talking to alicia's dad yeah he's been listening i love it if you accept responsibility the entire time, then you and, and you in an identity to it. Hopefully, you will not let yourself spiral down. You won't let yourself cut people out of your life that were very important to you, that are your support system, just based on the fact that you are upset or miserable. That's a hard lesson. Yeah. So I, I think that when you said Jake. Live beyond your past. It's not the whole and going back full circle. It isn't for the circle. let your past. Don't let your past define you. Let it contribute. Let it grow you. Let it. Like that's the the water on the plant. I forgive. I don't forget. Right. 
So that's the difference. Right. Yeah. Don't forget, but also forgive. Love unconditionally yourself and others. And realize that, you know, we, we talk about it and it's, it's, it's kind of cliche. You have a finite time on this earth. And if you want to spend it living in the past, get over it. I'm not saying like right now, but work on getting over it and grow. Because no matter how old you are, everyone, whatever age you are, you talked about this earlier, Jake. Yeah. Whether you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, someone at that age has been screwed over. And they found a way to enjoy the rest of their life. And I encourage you guys to do the same. Amen. So, thank you to everyone out there. Uh, happy Whiskey Wednesday, Jake. Welcome back to the garage. Love the fact that you're back. Thank you for having me, Steve. Cheers, Nate. Cheers. Thank you, Steve. Audience, cheers. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Nate. Thank you, audience. Guys, we'll see you guys next week. Enjoy your week. Uh, join the community page. Patreon.com, all that good stuff. Thanks to our sponsors, Tinderbox at Easton, Altidus USA, and BS Cigar Company.